Hello, Newfoundland and Labrador. Welcome to Newfoundland Growlers Hockey here on Rogers TV. This is it, last weekend of the regular season. Uh, what? What happened? I what? think Christmas is just around the corner, though. We have some playoffs coming. Yes, we do. Let's do. Bill Hart, Steve Callahan with you tonight. And, uh, you know, still lots to play for in the final two games. The Newfoundland Growlers are trying to catch that first spot in the North Division, uh, the Reading Royals. And it, it's still easily a possibility. It's just a matter of Newfoundland winning some and Reading losing some. If Newfoundland continues to do what they've been doing in the last 14 games, they're going to find themselves at the top of the standings. It's been incredible the way, the level of hockey that they have been playing. Mm -hmm. Well, five games each for both uh, Reading and uh, the Newfoundland Growlers and the teams below them. There's three teams battling for those final two North Division playoff spots, all separated by one point. It's incredible, really, when you watch Man, it. oh man, we've got some exciting hockey here in the ECHL. And boy, oh boy, and it looks like tonight's going to be no exception. Uh, you saw the boys last night playing, and you say Cincinnati is a very big team. Very big and very physical. And what was really impressive, the incredible amount of battles in front of the net last night. I, I think there's just so many bruises to the back. It was just a cross-check fiesta. But th what was really good to see was that Newfoundland could match any style. They can play the skill, and they last night out-battled, uh, despite the difference in size, they out-battled Cincy, and it was great to see. It was just a great playoff hockey game last right. night. Great to see, 3-2 game, and uh, I expect a little animosity tonight. Okay, listen, we're gonna throw things over to Mr. Ballard, Mr. Murphy, I guess they're doing the call tonight from the Mary Brown Center, so sit back, relax, enjoy the game, and we'll see you in the first intermission here on Rogers TV. inside the Mary Brown Center. And what a Saturday night this is shaping up to be, Ben Murphy. We got the Newfoundland Growlers on a four-game win streak, taking on the ECHL affiliates of the Buffalo Sabres and the hungry for points Cincinnati Cyclones. Here's tonight's starting lineup for your Newfoundland Growlers. In goal number 33, that's Angus Redmond. On the blue line tonight, number three, Garrett Johnston lines up alongside the pride of the Goulds, Newfoundland and Labrador. That's your captain, number 43, James Melindy. Down the middle, number 60. We got another townie here, that's Nathan Knoll. He'll play with number 15, Todd Skirving. Basically a Newfoundlander at this yeah, point. Yeah, pretty much. And who else we got out there? Number 20, Isaac Johnson. Starting on the opposition goal, making his professional debut here tonight. No, it's not Vin Diesel. It is number one, Mark Sinclair. For anyone I just lost with that joke, <laughs> Vin Diesel's real name is Mark Sinclair. Now you know. Tonight's referee is number 10, Brett Rowland. The linesmen are Brian Lambert and Jim Vale. The broadcasters are Chris Ballard and Ben Murphy. And we are thrilled to be here tonight to present to you this Saturday night contest. Skirving's ready to go, and I hope you are too, because this one is underway, and the Growlers win the opening draw here tonight. Melindy handed off 
And Garrett Johnston helps that one out of play. 10 seconds con. Oh, what a 10 seconds that was as we welcome in our viewers on Rogers Television tonight. Watching across the province. Thank you so much for joining us and spending your Saturday night with the Newfoundland Prowlers. This is the second to last home game of the regular season as they are going to reset at center ice for this faceoff. Here's Skirving wins another one back to Garrett Johnston, and he'll help this one in deep. It rolls all the way behind the net out. Trying to keep it alive in the offensive zone is Nathan Knoll, and he's going to try and track down Justin Boy. He's in the bench. What a hit! He's still in there. And here come the Growlers. Isaac Johnson pass through the middle. I. <laughs> how often do you see that? I'm still picking my jaw up off the floor, Chris. Oh, and blowing wow. a tire there is Skirvin. Five picks it up and flings it over the goal. That one kisses off the mesh. We've played 44 seconds here, and the hit of the year has. Oh, and down right below us here, Allen just cold cocked Nathan Knoll with a left and knocked him flat on his back. They're not gonna be a penalty for that. And there's Sean Allen not wasting any time getting back into the mix as we saw quite a bit of last night. And he comes into this game second overall in penalty minutes in the league with uh, 199. Well, and it's not gonna be 201 after that somehow. Uh, something tells me I wouldn't be shocked if he reached the 200 club here uh, at some point tonight. Probably won't have to wait too long if that's any indication. As they're actually going to have to, it looks like, repair the ice in front of the Growlers bench after that hit from uh, from Nathan Knoll on Justin Vive. You can see it right underneath the Coors Light logo. There's yeah. a bit of a, a sizable gouge. At least it looks from up here. It does, yeah. Well, Nathan Knoll certainly set the tone for this one tonight. Absolutely. Didn't waste any time. What a hit. Here we go. We're ready to go. And actually, the players are still trying to. They're not. They're not going to fix it. We're play on. Hoffenmeyer gets it off the faceoff win. Advance to Riley McCourt, who gets back into the lineup, missing three games for an injury. And no touch there by Sintazo. He'll give chase along the right wing boards. He's going to fall down on top of his man there as the Cyclones. That's McLeod trying to work his way out. But he's got to deal with Noel Hoffenmeyer, who frees it up instead for Finkelstein. Behind the net in advance. That one out of the reach of Noel Hoffenmeyer. And racing there to beat out the icing is Riley McCourt. His centering pass in on goal and stopped by Sinclair. The rebound gathered up. What a miscommunication there by the Cyclones. Pietro Nero into the slot, dancing to the outside, right wing corner, that's Hellickson. Behind the net, ooh, he blew a tire down there, that turned over the puck. We may have a two on one back the other way for the Cyclones, top of the right circle, in on goal, they score! Crags lifts one over the blocker of Angus Redmond, and the first goal tonight belongs to the Cyclones, it's one nothing. Bit of a tough bounce there, going the other way to send them on the two on one, and really just Nice pass, nice finish. Yeah, that little chip shot right over the blocker yep. shoulder of Angus Redmond. The first shot of the game, and man, that's a great A. Shot to give up is your first. You got to feel for Angus Redmond on that one against his former club here, too. Yeah, really not a whole lot he could really do on that one. It's a nice pass across the crease, and that nice little chip shot, like you said, Chris. And, and I thought Gordy Green might get a stick on it, but again, just comes down to nice pass, nice finish. Mark Johnstone takes to center, and we're going to redo this one. A minute and 40 seconds. It's all it took for the Cyclones to find the back of the net here tonight. Interesting start here to this contest. Oh, very much so. Cleared in by the Cyclones against the end boards. Pietro Nero pulls it away from Craggs. Leaves it behind the net just out of the reach of Helixson. He'll have to skate into that one. Pushing it out to center where it's wrapped right back in by the Cyclones. Pietro Nero behind the net. He's under pressure. Hands it off. There's a turnover held in at the line. Redirected wide. Collected in by John Stone. Gets it to the line, but Burnside holds it in. Leaves it back in the left wing corner. Nice hit thrown down there by Pietro Nero as the Growlers try to get out and get some offense started here. Still early in the first period. Shots are one apiece. 
loose behind the net, and Hellickson gets another chance to start it ahead. It's going to get out to Ward Center, freed up to Gordy Green. He'll go for a skate. And now we got all kinds of pushing and shoving. Behind the play, right in front of the Crowler bench. Three or four good whacks there. Oh, a heavy right hand down there, too. And Jeremy McKenna was right on the inside of that there. For a, gu for a skilled team, this Crowler team has a lot of grit. They don't back down to anything. It doesn't matter how big a team is in Cincinnati. They're not a small team. No, Chris, you're absolutely right. They'll stand up for each other. They'll stand up for themselves. Um, and we saw a lot of that from Jeremy McKenna last night, kind of getting caught he up did. in some of these scrums. And, you know, he wasn't willing to back down a couple of Really solid wax back and forth from both of them. A couple of good slashes, a couple of hard cross checks. Oh yeah, I could feel a few of those. I could see the bruises lifting off the by skin already here. That those are some heavy blows. Yeah, and and this game, you know, we're only two and a half minutes in, and we've seen a couple of scrums, we've seen a couple of heavy hits, we've seen a goal, and the temperature really rising here really, really quickly. You can kind of feel the intensity all around oh. Barry Brown Center right now, and we're only a couple minutes into this game, so. It's going to be interesting to see what the referee does now from this situation on. Does he I let agree. the boys continue to play? Does he start to bring this under control so we don't see any more of this? It's going to be really interesting to see kind of the tone of this game and what direction the referee wants to let it go in once we get restarted here. You're absolutely right. Get your tickets for tomorrow, folks. <laughs> if you're tuned in now, tomorrow is the final home game of the regular season. 4 p.m. start, get your tickets now, nlgrowlers.com slash tickets. Oh, this season has flown by, but also it's lasted two eternities. Yeah. It's it's a really strange space-time continuum here uh, over these last couple of months. I mean, oh, now there's an extra man going to sit in the penalty box, and the Growlers are going to find themselves short-handed here. Just two and a half minutes in, face off to the left of Redmond. Here we go. Skirving. Lines up on the draw. Face off one back by the Cyclones to the right side point. Left up top for Eggy. Walks the line and hands off top left circle. Franco in on the gold stick of Redmond and guided into the corner. Left wing side pushed away and cleared the length of the ice by James Melindy. So the details on that opening goal of the game, Craggs is ninth from Brown at 139. And the penalties on the play, it was Brown, a different Brown. Luke Brown got the assist, but Graham Brown uh, got the penalty. Uh, he went for cross-checking. McKenna took two different penalties, one for slashing, one for roughing. As the Growlers clear it in, Sinclair Leaves that one back behind the net, and the Cyclones look to start a rush here. 50 seconds gone on the penalty kill. The Growlers were 5 for 5 on the kill last night as that one is lifted over the net. Nathan Knoll, he's got lots of battle in his game so far, shown here tonight by putting the captain 5 in the bench. The Cyclones work it down low, but off the stick of Pietro Nero. He's going to give his man a hard rack into the end boards as the puck comes across. Brown's shot. That one wide of the cage, off the end boards, and it tumbles the length of the ice. About 35 seconds left on the Jeremy McKenna. Miners. As the Cyclone started up ice again, that one's going to be Melindy trying to catch up with it behind the net. He'll get it off a poke, and he will send it again the length of the ice. So a good start to this kill by the captain. Start to the kill. It's almost over. There's only 15 seconds. Left of the Jeremy McKenna minor. Sentazzo, he'll get to creep out in just moments. Griffin, he scored a big goal last night. There's a shot stopped by Redmond. The second try is broken up and tripped up on the play and a penalty coming up. The Crowlers, who just milliseconds ago got back to five on five, are going to get their first power play look of the evening. The Crowlers still own the league's best power play, and they were two for three last night. Two for three. And they scored on a delayed penalty last night, basically a six on five advantage. That's when Todd Skirving scored last night. Yeah, the Growlers power play looked like a well-oiled machine. 
last night, as did the penalty kill, and they picked up right where they left off. Now six for six on the weekend. Big oh. momentum shift here, possibly. It could be. Buckle up. In the box is Lincoln Griffin for tripping. 15-29 to go here in the first period, and the Growlers, they won the faceoff back, but they wanted into no man's land, and it was cleared into the Cincinnati bench by Caparuso. Only four seconds have ticked off the power play clock here. Still just one shot on goal for Newfoundland, but it's way early. Face off to the right of Sinclair. Skirving on the draw. He's out with Sintazo, Green, Finkelstein, and O'Brien. O'Brien leaps into the slot. Knocked down, Skirving two tries. He's one goal away from 20 on the season. I interviewed him post-game last night. I have a great relationship with Skirv, so most normal interview conventions kind of go out the window <laughs> when you interview someone you, who you know really well. So I asked him, I'm like, hey, Skirving, you know, talk about your evolution as, as a forward this season. And I'm like, how bad do you want 20? And then he gave me, you know, the, the answer you'd expect him to give. And I'm like, but how bad do you really want? Here's Zach O'Brien. Leaves it up top to Finkelstein. Now across and Tazzo. 20 seconds gone on the power play. Plenty of time to work. Cross ice with a feed. Looking up top. What a stop that was by Mark Sinclair. Buck loose against the end boards. Santazzo loses the foot race and it's cleared away. Right down to Angus Redmond. 5.05 gone here in the opening period. Chris Ballard and Ben Murphy on the call here tonight. The Mary Brown center between your Growlers and the Cincinnati Cyclones. And here come the Growlers. Starting it up ice is Ben Finkelstein. Dropped off for O'Brien. He'll carry it in. Handing off on the left for Santazzo. Loose puck against the end boards. Picked up and cleared by the Cyclones. One minute of power play time has elapsed. One minute of power play time remains. And Swinkelstein scoops it up from behind. Angus Redmond starts it up. Ice. No shots on goal so far on this power play. Swinkelstein gets in. Hands it across to John Stone. High slot. Riley McCourt. Sauce feed across to the right-hand side. He'll crisscross and Isaac Johnson plays it up top. Finkelstein now across. Pietro Nero steps in, rips one. Rebound loose in the slot. It was blocked in front and cleared again by the Cyclones. 35 seconds of power play time remains here. 14 minutes exactly left on the clock here in the opening period. Not the start I think the Growlers were looking for here. Right wing sign. John Stone works it in. Pietro Nero in the right wing corner. Trying to spin it back. And it lands for Hoffenmeyer into the slot. Riley McCourt. Wheels top left circle in toward the net and held up on the plane was John Stone. Couldn't get his stick on it. That's a clear again by Cincinnati. A good looking kill by the visitors. That all about does it. Here comes Griffin back out onto the ice. Growlers go 0 for 1 on the power play here tonight. Here comes Tyler Welch down the middle. Using his speed as a weapon as he gets it in deep. Left behind the net, Nathan Knoll does a pass through. Welch tried to center it for Knoll there. Great effort behind the opposition cage. This one didn't connect. Lifted into the air, but club down by Skirving. Couldn't hold the line, though. It's knocked out to center. Brown, he is bodied in there by Welch as the puck rolls right to Knoll Hoffenmeyer. 13 minutes to go here in the opening period. Shots are now 4-3 Newfoundland. And here comes Todd Skirving into the offensive zone. Cuts in wide right with a backhand. That one wide of the cage. Kept alive, Garrett Johnston loose behind the net. Wells trying to center, spotted Skirving, sneaking into the high slot. That's broken up by Cincinnati. Looking to clear that one is Luke Brown. He'll bounce it all the way ahead. Now got to be careful of the man cutting to the front of the cage as that one's whistled wide. The left wing corner charging in. That's Matthew Cairns sending it back to the right-hand point. Walking inside door. Oh, and a big miss there as Cairns hooked it wide. High slot, Cairns gets another try along the left wing boards. Up top, Brown barely kept it on side. Sent inside door, oh my, a couple of Cyclones collide and tumble over each other as the Growlers regain control. Garrett Johnston back to James Melindy as the Growlers complete a line change. Melindy, his pass, that's going to be knocked away and the Cyclones clear it back in. Angus Redmond behind his net leaves it for James Melindy. He'll hand it ahead. Riley McCart, remember, he's playing forward tonight. Long pass, finds O'Brien onside. He's in all alone. Stop by Sinclair. What a chance. 6-3 now. The shots for the Growlers as they hold it in left point. Cross ice to Pietro Nero. 
Back up top for Hellickson. Backs it in on goal through traffic and held by Vin Diesel. Chris, we were talking a lot last night about Matteo Pietraniero's game and how good he looked last night pretty well the whole way through all season. Yeah, he looks good here tonight as we send it back to the desk for a short break. All right, thank you guys. We'll throw it back to you in just a second. Bill and Steve here. We expected a tough game from the Cincinnati Cyclones. What we didn't expect is to see six foot six team captain Justin Vibe be knocked into the bench by five foot eleven Nathan Knoll. Check what? this out. <laughs> what do you get when you have 174 pounds meeting 237? You get a highlight of the night. Great job, guys, <laughs> on getting that video. But that's what started the game. Uh, incredible tilt, uh, you know, tilt in the sense of what an atmosphere. Boom, right here, right <laughs> over the boards. <laughs> Gee. If we were to put take something from Nathan Knowles' resume, it probably wouldn't have been that style of play. Nope. And it's great to see it. It just shows uh, the little bit of grit that they have right throughout the lineup. We've loved them. We've yes. been a little bit oh. of a fan, you know, a little ball of hate that he's been playing with. But right. that speed, that tenacity, uh, that's 174 versus 237. That's incredible. All right. So the the the, the toughness of Cincinnati, and they're a big team too. Yeah trying to contain the speed of the Newfoundland Growlers. So let's check out if they can continue to do that as we throw it back to Chris and Ben on Rogers TV. Lackluster. So, but hey, we know uh, the Growlers uh, don't typically put together back-to-back -to -back lackluster power plays So the next one. I got a good feeling about the next one, Ben. I'm with you. Or maybe even this one. It's an offensive zone cross, and Taza won the face off. That's going to be pulled away from him and started out slowly down the left wing is five. His pocket was picked by Hoffenmeyer, but he charges ahead. Left back behind, up top for Schultz. He'll roll it down low. Knocked down in front of the goal was Hoffenmeyer. Play continues as Andrusiak tries to find some room. Five. Hands it off, up top to the circle. That's knifed away off the goal stick of Redmond. It lands for O'Brien. He'll play it ahead to center. Sintazzo throwing his weight around on Allen down there. And it's Allen who gets the puck inside his own zone. Just under 11 minutes to go here. And that's going to be an icing call. See, that's what Noel Hoffenmeyer is saying. Maybe, maybe he's got a future as an official. Who knows? The Mount Pearl Junior Blades, Ben. Oh, what a finish. Oh, man. What a finish indeed last night. Double overtime. Game seven at the Bay Arena. I don't think there's a better location in the whole province to have that game seven Ooh. last night um, in terms of a raucous crowd. What fans. But uh, penalty shot to win game seven. Double Unbelievable. Game. You Incredible. couldn't script it any better than that. Growlers at center. Open to script. Uh, right a goal into their own script here tonight is McKenna. He scored last night. Old back, and he's going to take it down the right wing with some speed. Keeps to the outside, a high riser. That one over the net, off the end boards, and it tumbles down inside the Growler's end. Chasing it down is Matt McLeod, but Matt Hellickson able to keep that one away. Mark Johnstone, he's under pressure. Growler's win that puck battle is Pietro Nero. Nice job using the body there, trying to send Johnstone ahead. That hops over his stick. And that's an icing with 10.07. Listen to this crowd, Ben Murphy. It is rocking in here tonight, Chris. The atmosphere is just fantastic. All the minor hockey jerseys in here. Lots of different colors, lots of different teams. And they're excited, and they want a Growlers win. Well, let's, let's get a goal. That'll go a long way. Face off to the left of Angus Redmond. John Stone, Pietro Nero, Green, McKenna. John Stone steps in. A right-handed shot. It's pulled back by the Cyclones. High slot. Cairns through traffic. Wide of the cage. Off the end boards. Nice hustle by John Stone to tie up his man. And the Growlers free it up. That's Pietro Nero with the bank pass. Up for McKenna. Advance toward Gordy Green. Hassel draped all over him. Green gets into the offensive zone, but had it roll off the end of his stick. He's going to stay on top of his man. But here come the Cyclones anyway. In over the line on side, tipped away by Garrett Johnston. Following up, pass Holt out in front, and that shot wide of the cage. Left wing corner, Garrett Johnston. He's leaning into his man. Good coverage down there by the Growlers. Franco works it free, but all the way out to center goes the puck. And the Cyclones scoop back in their own zone to pick it up. 
9-19 to go, and there's a great steal, and in comes Isaac Johnson. Cuts to the slot, waits, waits again, looks up top, oh, just barely missed the glove hand corner. Good shift here by the Growlers. Worked, hopped over the stick, though, of Welsh, giving chase again is Isaac Johnson. Good body positioning there by Skirving. It's clear, but just to center. Garrett Johnson spins it free to Melindy Hill. Get that one in. Behind the net, Sinclair leaves it. Clearing attempt there, hopped over the stick of Welch, and now a two-on-two rush for the Cyclones. In over the line on side, Andrusia stops up his pass, blocked away, held in temporarily at the line. Hoffenmeyer sweeps it free, and away comes Finkelstein with the puck, his pass. Off of body and off the mark. Cyclones get control. That's going to be stolen away. Isaac Johnson unable to keep it. Hello, that one. Clean over the glass and out of play with 8.25 left here in the first period. Speaking of first period, coming up at our first intermission, <laughs> our first segment of the terrible segue report. <laughs> nope. Uh, for you folks on Rogers, you're going to hear from tonight's starting goaltender, number 33, Angus Redman. For those of you tuned in on Mixler and on Flow Hockey tonight, I bug, as always, Eric Wellwood, head coach of the Growlers during our first intermission. You like that joke, did you? I like that. That was good. I got a few bad segues. Too. Oh, I, I bet you do. <laughs> Five behind the Growlers goal. Works it free. Andrusiak in the right wing corner. High slot shot right into the bread basket of Angus Redmond. No harm done there. As the faceoff stays inside the Growlers and just the fourth shot of the period for the Cyclones. Ben, if you remove that first, that early goal, I mean, this has been a pretty good game for the Growlers so far. They're out shooting their opponents. They're limiting the scoring opportunities. Now, obviously, life doesn't work that way. It's not just like, oh, no, we're not counting that first one. That one, we're not, we're not going to, the, the game hadn't started. That'd be nice, eh? But, no, it just feels like the Growlers, I think they know they still have that, that extra gear that they can get to and kick things up a notch here. And I think any guy up and down that roster would, would likely agree because this team knows how good they can be. And it still feels like at this point, it's still a little bit of a feel out process. And it sure looks it like is. they're kind of letting Cincy come to them a little bit. But we know as soon as the Growlers decide that, all right, we're going to turn it on, how fast they're going to turn it on. Turn around. And we're expecting that anytime. Face off one by the Growlers. Wiley McCourt, that one a little out of his reach, but he managed to poke it to center. Allen. Puts it off of Sintazo, and it ends up into the Cincinnati zone with under eight minutes to go here in this opening period. And Ruziak almost lost it in his skates. That, oh, I don't know about that offside call. And now, what a pass ahead. O'Brien could reel it in. He's given a real hard whack down there in the corner by Matthew Cairns. Loose against the end boards and freed up by the Cyclones. Away they come towards center, off the glass. That one gets him deep. First man back is Finkelstein. He'll advance it. Johnstone now to center. Poked away from McKenna. And Finkelstein cuts behind the net to keep away from Louis Caparuso. Gates the end boards. Johnstone bounces off of Caparuso and out of the corner. I don't know about that pass. Behind the net, Johnstone picks it up off of a confusing play by the Cyclones. Here's McKenna, plays it off the boards, hoping to get back to it himself. It's going to be pushed to center instead. Seven minutes to go here in this opening period. Matteo Pietraniero, just inside his own blue line, finds McKenna on the right-hand side of center. Trying to get that one into the left-wing corner. That's knocked down, and Cairns gets it back, plays it up the left-wing side, and Franco ahead. Pushed in, but the Growlers recover it and move it out quickly. Pietraniero dishes back in his own zone to Hellickson. Matt Hellickson ahead for Pietro Nero. Six and a half to play here in the first period. Shot 7-4. Gordy Green, and they're going to say offside. Just a hair. Very close. Just a a hair. couple of real tight calls here. But, Chris, the pace of this first period has been oh, no. this Again. Sorry, Ben. This faceoff's going to come at center, so they admit uh, the fault there on the call. Okay. So. So a hair in the heat, a hair on the a, a hair incorrect <laughs> by the officials. James Melindy takes it off the win. For Welch, took him two tries, but he's able to lift it in deep as Nathan Knoll gives chase in the right wing corner. Look out. Here comes the wrecking ball. 
Melindy back into the corner for Noel, trying to spin away from trouble, still has control of the puck down there. He's tripped up in the corner, no call again. Second try, Skirving, he's dumped away from the puck, no call again. A cross check hit from behind, that's not called either. And look at this filthy play down into the corner. You're seeing it on your TV screen. Unbelievable yeah, stuff. I'm all for physicality and I'm all for playoff atmosphere here, but I'm all for, you know, the right things being called here too. There's a line. There you know. sure is. Apparently not here tonight. It's a burn burner here. Old school senior hockey style. Let them play. Hey, oh, I'm fine with that. McCourt plays it back in his own zone behind the net. Garrett Johnston to James Melindy. 5.20 to go. A long pass. Touched in. Look at the wheels on Riley McCourt there. Trying to catch up to that puck. But instead, storming back in is Mingo. Top circle. Good stick there. That one ends up along the right wing boards. And stolen back by Newfoundland. What a play. And O'Brien's going to get loose once again. Toe drag. What a move. And a backhand shot is stopped by Sinclair. Five minutes to go here in the first. Andrews Yak trying to do it all himself there. Plenty of teammates around him elected to keep the puck, and that's a turnover as Gordy Green tries to get in with it. Trying to get in between the defense as well. That's going to be broken up. Eggie slides it across. Ice as Cincinnati looks up and finds Griffin streaking in. Along the right wing boards, pass off the mark into the boots of Caparuso. Loose puck down there. McKenna's in a battle for it, and he will muscle that to center, put back in by the Cyclones. 9-4, that's the shots here for Newfoundland. Johnstone, beautiful move to get by his man, lost his stick and kicked it free to Gordy Green. His sauce feed ahead intended for Pietranero, joining the rush was knocked down. Pass Holt, slams on the brakes, works it across the ice. That one pinballs away, the Growlers recover it off the end boards, Pietranero. Touch back to him by Nathan Knoll. Knoll, head up, receives the pass. Deeks by Franco, but Franco picked his pocket. Cleared into the right wing corner. Well out of his net comes Angus Redman. A beautiful play. And now Isaac Johnson gets it off a pass into the zone. His shot off the mark. Taken back by the Cyclones. Lifted into the air to center. Garrett Johnston spins a backhand pass for James Melindy. Back to Johnson. And he'll start it up ice. Into the offensive zone, off the stick of Sintazo, rolls into the right wing corner, Skirving. One hand on the stick, poked it free behind the net, rolled up onto the back apron of the net. That's where it's going to stay with 3.20 remaining here as we take a short break. So let's send it back to the buys on the desk for a little debrief here, Bill Hart and Steve Callahan. <laughs> yeah, I just ran in here. <laughs> I just ran in here, made it just in the nick of time. Uh, thank you, Chris, and thank you, Ben, Bill, and Steve here. And uh, boy, what a chippy period. You called this, man. You said yesterday when you were at the game at the Mary Brown Center, this Cincinnati team is big, they're tough, and they uh, love to push people around. They're a big physical team, and certainly, uh, you know, we see oh, great job, guys, on the cameras tonight and the, and the uh, replays. This was some great physical hockey, but again, the problem that persists here is that, wow, wow, wow. Yeah. You know, when the referee sets a standard that, uh, that he's not going to call things early, it's just going to exemplify and amplify mm -hmm. a call that may be made later on. It makes that minor that might get called a little later uh, that much more important. Mm -hmm. So setting the tone tonight, letting them play, yeah. very good physical play, great job. Uh, guys letting it roll there and, and seeing the physicality. It's a typical, typical playoff game, and it's a great test for the Growlers. Yeah, both teams still have a lot to play for, of course. The Growlers looking for first spot in the North yep. Division, and, of course, Cincinnati trying to get a playoff spot. All right, I'm going to throw it back now to Chris and Ben on Rogers TV. And it is O'Brien, Sintazo, McCourt with Hoffenmeyer and Finkelstein. To the left of Mark Sinclair we go. One back by O'Brien. Fought off, held in at the line, Finkelstein walks it in. Into the slot, McCord side door, it's a try, they score! It's Oren Santazzo, the Tasmanian Devil gets the buys on the board here tonight. 1-1 the score. 
It feels like it's uh, only a matter of time before <laughs> the Crowlers find a way to break through. What a beautiful play. And it started with Ben Finkelstein up on the blue line, just showing why he is the top defenseman on this team and one of the top scoring defensemen in the ECHL. A beautiful heads up play. And then it's just that crisp passing we've seen from this Growlers team so many times. Nice look, Riley McCourt getting his way onto the score sheet. And Oren Santazzo's not gonna make any mistake from there, Chris. Now tied for the team lead in goals with Zach O'Brien is Oren Santazzo. And what a rookie campaign it's been. The rookie sensation. Unbelievable stuff. Cleared in by the Cyclones. Redmond has a little time, but he's almost. Oh, he turned it over. Oh, luckily the D. What an effort to bail out the goaltender there. Ooh, Sintazo stiff arm there as the Crowlers can't get the puck. Inside three minutes to go, and look at that easy pickings there. Barangus Redmond as Griffin getting into it a little bit down there with Ben Finkelstein. So. So they assists to Finkelstein and McCourt on the goal by Oren Sintazzo, his 26th of the season at 16:48. Just a classic Newfoundland Growlers tic-tac-toe goal down low back in the net. I wanted McCourt to shoot it. That's the inner Newfoundlander in me <laughs> wanting to scream, shoot, by shoot, but we well, talked we, about that last night. They have night. a little more patience than you and I. Thank goodness for that. I'd make a terrible professional hockey player. Well, I said if I could just pass, skate, shoot, I would have been a great hockey player. I know. Any one of the three, and I could have been decent. Yeah. But unfortunately. No, you went over on that one, Yeah, bud. unfortunately, I'm a better talker than skater. Well, hey, well, we're happy to use your talents <laughs> in the booth here, my friend. Face off to the right of Redmond with 2.50 remaining here. That's a face off. What, what a block there by Hellickson. There's that one. Rockets off his body, and here come the Crowlers at center. McKenna over the line on side. What a feed! It comes Johnstone, and that may have grazed off the outside of the post and ended up out of play. And a little more rough stuff here. And the Growlers don't normally face opposition quite like this that play the Growlers quite this way. But I kind of like what what it does to the Growlers. Yeah, and it's good to play these different teams that bring different styles. You want your team to play in as many different situations as possible before going into the playoffs because it's a different beast once you get into playoff mode. And Cincinnati, they're certainly playing playoff hockey in that in-your-face style. And I think it's great for the Growlers to get this kind of test so late in the season. Mark Johnstone to take the draw, ties up his man, puck loose. Gordy Green, McKenna works it free in the right wing corner. Sneaks away from his defender as well. Spins it down behind the net to Gordy Green. Look at that battle in front of the net there as Johnstone, he's jostling with Graham Brown down there. Johnstone, he is engaged here tonight. He's got his man Franco pinned against the right wing boards. Gordy Green's doing the same away from the puck there as well. McKenna trying to get his stick in. Now he's doing the same. What a battle with Brown down there. And McKenna comes away with the puck. Spins it back into the right wing corner. Oh, and here's Johnstone and his man. Gordy Green drops his man to the ice. You got to blow this play dead, don't yeah, you? Seriously, there we it's go. only a matter of time. What a battle. Wow. Both sides. That, that's the highlight of the night right there <laughs> was everything we just saw in the right wing corner for the last 30 seconds all the way up to Gordy Green just dropping a guy about a foot taller than him. And Jeremy McKenna saying, listen, you're not going to push me around. You might think you can because I might look a little bit smaller out and especially compared to some of these Cincinnati guys, but he showed that Jeremy McKenna will not be pushed around this ice. He will not be intimidated. He's going to keep playing his game. That's a good East Coast boy in him right there. Exactly. Summerside, Prince Edward Island. Face off one by the Growlers. All the way back, Melindy into the high slot. Good stick lift by Isaac Johnson to keep the play alive. At the line, Kara Johnston looking for his first of the year. And he can't beat the glove of Mark Sinclair there. And credit to Sinclair. He's having a good showing here in this first He period. has full, full marks. I mean, you never know what to expect out of a guy making his pro debut. I mean, it's a level of hockey completely new to this young man, but he does not look the least bit out of place. No, and I mean, it's not easy to face two Zach O'Brien breakaways in your first period of pro <laughs> hockey either. So, you know, full credit, full Great credit point. to Sinclair. Ten saves already on the night for Sinclair. And the faceoff will come to his right, Nathan Knoll. Welch, Isaac Johnson with Melindy and Garrett Johnston on the back end. Faceoff one back 
to Garrett Johnston, now to James Melindy. Back for Garrett Johnston, trying to feed it back into the corner. That pass stolen away. Pass over. Out to center, off the stick of Schultz, trying to knife it in deep again. Garrett Johnston's the first one of the puck. He'll free it up for Tyler Welch. He is going to draw a penalty. What a play by Welch as it's lifted away by Melindy. That'll be touched up, so with a minute and change to go here in this period, the Growlers get a late power play as Passel heads to the box for tripping. I mean, you're going to take that power play every time. And credit to Tyler Welch there as well because the difference between that being a non-call and a call was Tyler Welsh kept his feet moving the entire time Bingo. behind the net. If he stays stationary there, kind of quits on the play a little bit, that's not getting called. He keeps moving his feet, growlers go to the power play, and that cannot be underestimated, the value that that has of continuously moving your feet. 27.6%. That's how good the growlers' power play is. They score on better than one and four. And a face-off win there. They'll have to play fetch the dogs will this time as the face-off was won all the way back inside the road zone. But Finkelstein now drops it off for O'Brien. Could have a pair, if not more, already here tonight. Gets in over the line, little give and go. Knocked off his stick, the left wing corner, clearing attempt. Knocked down by Skirving, kept alive for the moment. Ooh, and that one caught him up high. Loose behind the net, O'Brien hits two. Players at the same time, but it will be located and clear. We're in the final minute here, 40 seconds left in the period, and what a pass by Redman. Up for McKenna. McKenna takes it back from Finkelstein, sends it rink wide. Skirving stays out there for now. He's got it off. 30 seconds left in the first. Long feet ahead, O'Brien. Played gingerly ahead. Here comes McKenna, steaming in on goal. Nice stick lift there to catch up with him. Pass comes all the way up top. 18 seconds left, and Finkelstein goes for a skate. Right wing board slams on the brakes to keep it away from Burnside behind the net. 10 seconds to go in the first. O'Brien all the way up top. Santazzo fakes in on goal, and that's stopped. Three seconds to go. McKenna, a nice hit in the right wing corner, and that's going to do it here for an entertaining opening period of hockey here at the Mary Brown Center, tied at one. After 20 minutes of play, shots on goal in that opening period ended up being 11-5 in favor of the Growlers, who will enjoy 49 seconds of power play time when we return for the second period. But in the meantime, let's send it back to the desk to Bill Hart and Steve Callahan. They're going to break down all the details from that first intermission. How about it, fellas? Chris Ballard and Ben Dropkick Murphy. Good call, guys, and what a great period of hockey. That was fantastic. That's playoff Man. hockey right there. Uh, you know, the, the scrums in the corners, the battles in front of the net, uh, the second efforts, the back checking, and then we had some offense as well. Yes, we, <laughs> we did. had some incredible hitting. Yes, we got some highlights for you, but we have to go back to the highlight we've already shared. For those of you who are just joining us, uh, this is why we love Nathan Knoll so much of the Newfoundland Growlers. Five foot 11, Justin Vive, six foot six. Check this out. Whammo. Hello. Right from buck drop. I think they had a nice little energy <laughs> oh, line starting the game. Uh, and Nathan found it. You know, when you know that you're starting the game, you want to start on time. It's a privilege to start a hockey game. And he comes with a big hit there. It's all speed and it's all dynamics right there. That is physics 101, kids, right there. Man, oh man, yes. I mean, that, that's the kind of thing you want to see yep. in your hockey team. You yes. want to be able to score the goals, but yep. you want to throw some bodies around as well. We do have highlights of some goals, though, and we start with this one from the Cincinnati Cyclones, making it 1-0. Oh, Coach Wellwood's not going to like this one. One, two, three, four puck watchers right here. Four. I mean, this is real basic hockey, but as a coach, this is something that really burns you. All four back checkers with white jerseys were watching the puck carrier, and yet here he is, sneaks in right behind with a little tap in. That's a coach killer right there. That's mm -hmm. one that really frustrates you. You know, you can have one back checker looking at the puck carrier, mm -hmm. and, but guys have to identify those people that are coming in right. into the danger zones. And if you don't do that, it's going to be dangerous. Coach Wellwood is not going to like that highlight for sure. That one is definitely going to make uh, the next day game day meetings for sure. Absolutely. Well, uh, Coach did like this, though. Yep. So Tazzo, once again, finding himself on the scoring sheet, tying for the lead, uh, team lead for goals on this one. Well, I think wingers win face off so many times you see him come in they they make that draw right there beautiful play right to the back door I mean 
That's key. If we could roll that again, again, you're going to see the two wingers collapsing on the faceoff. They win the puck, lay it back to the D. Great mobility on the blue line here just to expose past the, the uh, two defenders. Little back check play here, little back door tap in. Uh, fantastic. That is chemistry 101. Physics 101 earlier, that was chemistry 101 right there. So. Finkelstein and McCourt with the assists on that goal. So there you go. After one period of play, it's 1-1. One, one. It's worth mentioning, too, the six foot six gentleman, Justin Vive, that got knocked over the boards, is son by, of none other than Rick Vive, whose Toronto Maple Leaf goal-scoring record was broken this week by some dude by the name of Austin Matthews. Incredible, incredible. All those little connections that you put together there. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, Rick Vive was a guy that I grew up watching. I yeah. love number 22. He was a goal mm -hmm. scorer. And to, uh, to see every the, the, the tie-in now, and of course, uh, we have to acknowledge what Austin Matthews has been doing. It's sure. absolutely fantastic. All right, we're going to take a little break here, and we'll be back as the first intermission continues on Rogers TV. Interest payments were going up. Creditors were calling. I finally realized I needed help. The people at Jane's and Knows where they really took care of me, and I'm glad I chose a local solution. I felt like they understood me better. Getting help with my debt has given me the energy, the headspace, and the time to make my dreams come true. A chance to start again with knowledge, support, and people in your corner. Are you looking for that kind of help? It's okay. Learn more about Leah's story at janesnosothy.ca. If you want convenience, Marie's Money Mart is here for you. A one-stop shop for a variety of products, homestyle bread, sandwiches, plus check out our freshly baked artisan breads and single-serve desserts exclusively at our in-store bakery on Frecker Drive. With 25 locations, wherever you go, there we are. I can't thank people enough for donating to the Warhams. If I could, I'd give every single donor a big hug because things that they've allowed these kids to do are amazing gives them the opportunity to experience life as everyone else would. They can do so much. They can play musical instruments, snowboarding, play hockey, kayak, swim. There's no doors being closed to them, and I find that amazing. It's affected my family in a way that we may never be able to thank you. All right, welcome back. Uh, I think my burrito's done. <laughs> I think that's what the beeping was. I'm not quite sure. Uh, last Sunday, I was at the game watching the uh, Newfoundland Growlers, and of course, it was Marvel Day, and Brian Rogers was filling in for Chris, for Chris Batstone on the PA and having a great time with it. Well done, Brian Rogers. Good to see you up there on the big screen making the calls and such. And Brian Rogers had a chance to talk to the Growlers' starting goaltender tonight, Angus Redmond. Thanks very much, fellas. Here in the first intermission on this is Saturday evening from the Mary Brown Center with the pride of Langley, B.C., number 33, goaltender Angus Redmond. Angus, thanks for joining us on our broadcast. Uh, you and I became buddies, uh, and you became buddies with Newfoundland and Labrador a couple years ago now. Then the dastardly old COVID hit, and you beat feet. But now you're back, bro. Tell me about that experience for you and what it feels like being back here with the Newfoundland Growlers. Yeah, my first round in Newfoundland, uh couldn't have gone better, honestly. You know, I went on that uh, big run. We had a great team. Um, it's unfortunate that COVID kind of ruined it, and because uh, I think we would have had a good chance at going back to back for the Kelly Cup. But uh, couldn't be happier to be back and uh, just uh, trying to get back to the game I was at then, and uh, hopefully uh, go on a nice run in the playoffs here. Well, of course, Angus has been affectionately nicknamed Beef, and I mean, let's face it, it's it's a natural. His first name is Angus, and any of you meat connoisseurs out there know what we're talking about. So you gotta love that nickname, though, Angus. I know you hear it a lot from the boys. You hear it from the crowd. Does it get you stoked up a little bit? Yeah, it's awesome. It's uh, I think it's, it sticks with people quick, and uh, in college, the crowd would had the, had the beef chan going after saves. I think it's uh, catching on a little bit here. I know I know you're trying your best with your uh, <laughs> announcing or the PA to get it going. So uh, the, and the boys, uh, scurves and all the boys love it. So uh, yeah, it's it's good fun and uh, and it's, it's I think it's a pretty solid nickname. Well, for you folks who can't remember, and you should, Angus went on a great run with the Growlers that COVID year, 16-2-0, and, and he put up phenomenal numbers, shutouts, just was playing great goal. Gus, you played your 100th and 101st ECHL games last weekend, and it was as a Growler. So congrats, you got victories in both those games. 
in particular the Sunday afternoon game to sweep Worcester you had to feel real good in the third because you were simply outstanding yeah thanks yeah it was a uh, I think it was Worcester's strongest effort of the weekend um, you know those three and threes are tough uh, everybody's tired at the at the end so um, just wanted to keep the boys in it you know usually they put up put up a lot of goals so it's good to feels good to bail them out in a in a tight one and it, it's uh it's just pushing for that first place so every every point counts and uh yeah it was a huge weekend it really was a three game sweep of worcester they only managed to get the one angus he didn't have much of a chance on the seeing eye dog from the point but i'm sure that there's a lot of pride for you and chase to uh, post back-to-back -back shutouts and then try to slam the door and send them going back to central mass without any goals at all yeah, um, it was a great game by Chase too to come in here. His first one as a growler and, and let in none. And uh, obviously a shutout doesn't happen without a great effort in front of you. The boys were great defensively and getting back on the back check. Oh, so yeah, the one the one got in, but uh, overall just a very successful weekend and uh, couldn't be happier. Angus, ironically, you were dealt to the Newfoundland Growlers just a month ago from the Cincinnati Cyclones organization. So tell me a little bit about the team that the Growlers are playing this weekend, trying to uh, stretch their winning streak here at Mary Brown Center. Um, yeah, they're uh, they're a big physical team. I think we haven't really seen too much of that since I've been here. It's more and more skilled teams been playing, so they play a little bit of heavier game. Um, good power play, well coached, so um, should be a good test and uh, a little bit more of a, a playoff kind of kind of feel. I if I had to guess. Yeah. And their head coach Jason Payne used to play as a member of the St. John Flames here in. Uh, that when it was mile one center before it changed to the Mary Brown Center. So there's a little bit of trivia out there. Angus, walk us through your youth. You're from Langley, BC. Tell me when you first stopped, started, pardon me, stopping biscuits. Um, I can't remember exactly when. I know I started as a player, young, and then you kind of start going in and out with uh, changing with guys on the team. And I guess it's stuck. Um, some days I question what I'm doing in there, but uh, <laughs> when you get hit in the head a couple times, but uh, no, it's. Uh, Obviously, I must have been good at it and just uh, stuck in there. <laughs> so, so once you got between the pipes, you knew you were going to be a goalie. Did you try to, uh, I guess, um, parlay your skill set from somebody you watched as a youngster growing up in the National Hockey League? Um, yeah, being a, from Vancouver area, Luongo was obviously pretty dominant in, in those years and took, him to, took the Canucks to a cup final in 2011. So um, definitely him and uh, Longquist was always one of my favorite goalies. So those two were probably my... Uh, the guys I would try to model my game after a little bit. So obviously being from Langley, were you a Canucks fan? Of course, yeah, yeah. Whole family's Canucks fans. So were you guys ever season ticket holders? Did you get to see many games? Or Because Langley's a little bit of a drive from Vancouver, obviously, where they play at the Rogers Center. Yeah, never been season ticket holders. You know, it's pretty pretty pricey in well, Vancouver. Yeah, but uh, And I think my dad would rather just sit on the couch and watch. He's not a big <laughs> fan of the big crowds. So um, just watched a lot of games from the couch and uh, definitely got to a few a season. My mom would get tickets through work and stuff. So got to got to a fair share over the years. Excellent. Walk us through who you played for minor hockey wise and leading up to turning pro. Um, yeah, just Langley minor hockey throughout all the youth years and then um, played a year of major midget kind of the lower mainland mm -hmm. of Vancouver's got a got a little league there for for the top midget players. And then I played um, Half a year junior B for the Port Moody Panthers. Uh, Port Moody. We were last place team. I'd see a lot of pucks, but I think that was great for my development. Yeah. And then I uh, went up to Salmon Arm in the BCHL and had a very successful three and a half years. Um, loved it there. Still go back in the summers. Made a lot of friends there. So, um, And then I went to Michigan Tech for a season and then signed with the Ducks and turned pro. So, And here we are now on year five. Wow. That's good stuff, Angus. Away from hockey. Any other interests when you're not stopping in Glasgow biscuits? <laughs> um, big golf fan, play a lot of golf. My dad works at a course, so get out with him quite a bit. And a lot of my buddies are, are big golfers. I think uh, the pandemic really turned everybody yeah. into golfers. So yeah, um, play a lot of golf and then just uh, training and stuff, all that. Nothing too too crazy, but uh, it's it's good to get home and see everyone in the off seasons. So I got to ask you, do you say whack and then that nasty four letter word or are you just pretty groovy out on the golf course, kind of serene and got a decent handicap? Uh, I like to think I'm pretty decent, but you never know what golf it changes every round. So there's quite a few rounds like that, like you said, but some some good ones mixed in. 
Angus, it's always a pleasure, my friend. Thank you so much for joining us in the first intermission. Good luck with your stay here with the Growlers. It's an awesome hockey club. I know that to a man, they all believe that they have the skill set here to win, and you'll be an integral part of that. So keep the biscuit out of the basket, beef, and we'll be happy campers. All right. Thanks, Rog. Appreciate it. All right. Let's go back to the desk. Beef. Oh, I'm so never calling Angus Redmond by Angus Redmond again without saying beef. Brian, you've done it again. Uh, good guy, that Redmond. Very much so, yeah. You could tell he's got a little bit of a character there. I think mm -hmm. he was letting some stuff slip out to show his personality. And, yes. you know, those are the type of guys that turn out to be goaltenders. Yes, right. Uh, and they're the, they're the glue of the team. And uh, he's got a little bit of, hey, five years. Uh, of experience and he mm -hmm. knows why he's here to uh, and to certainly mm -hmm. solidify and glue that run for the playoffs. All right, we're going to take a little break and we'll be right back to wrap up the first intermission here on Rogers TV. It all started when I racked up some serious debt. Interest payments were going up, creditors were calling. Janes and Noseworthy came up with a plan. Knowing that the phone was going to stop ringing and that I was not in this alone was a huge relief. Bankruptcy or a consumer proposal or whatever help you get is not the end. It's just the beginning. A chance to start again with knowledge and support and people in your corner. Are you ready? Get out of debt. It's okay. Learn more about Leah's story at janesnosely.ca. If you want convenience, Marie's Money Mart is here for you. A one-stop shop for a variety of products, homestyle breads, sandwiches, plus check out our freshly baked artisan breads and single-serve desserts exclusively at our in-store bakery on Frecker Drive. With 25 locations, wherever you go, there we are. Welcome to the traditional, ancestral, unceded territory of the Stalo people. The Stalo are people of the river. I'm so thankful for the courage and resiliency of our ancestors who lived on this land since time immemorial. Each of us have gifts from the Creator and our Creator has a plan and purpose to be fulfilled in our territory. As we embrace our traditional teachings, we can lead the next generation into the fullness of what our Creator designed. Our shared history reveals a broken relationship, but as all Canadians commit to hear truth, acknowledge injustice, we can learn to walk in our traditional way, let's not, with a good heart and a good mind. Then all of our lives will be enriched. Kwasai. Welcome back to the first intermission. Check out the out-of-town scoreboard with those teams in the North Division. Of course, Growler fans are hoping for losses by the Reading Royals. That's the team they're trying to catch for first in the North Division. And Reading is home to the Maine Mariners tonight. And that's an 8.30 Newfoundland time start. And five minutes after that, Trois Rivières in Wooster. And they'll drop the puck at that time. And Trois Rivières, Wooster, and Maine, three teams separated by one point battling for those final two playoff spots. So that's where it stands right now, and we'll know more by the end of the night. Uh, at this time, we want to uh, just uh, slow things down a little bit and just acknowledge that uh, we lost one of our fans recently. We did. Uh, tragically, uh, this past weekend, uh, Brad Caravan um, was killed in a tragic car accident. Um, Brad was a staple of this local community. Mm -hmm. He had a impact um, in the soccer community, in the hockey community, but most importantly with his friends, all of his friends. It was incredible to see the outpouring of uh, compassion for Brad, the acknowledgement of the type of person he was, mm -hmm. and the smile that radiated wherever he walked. We acknowledge him as well because of his life partner, Duan, and yeah. um, the impact that they both had. Um, they were huge Growler fans, obviously, and still are. Um, but not only that, uh, his other true life, uh, life was his son, Colton. Uh, they were everything to him, and that's what he lived life for. Um, we are sad, certainly. Uh, about his passing and as tragic as it was. Um, but to 
to understand that the impact that he left here uh, with his friends, with the community, with the volunteering that he did uh, was truly impactful. They often say that everyone brightens up a room and certainly every room that he walked into, he was the light and the energy of that room. And um, we will be better having known him uh, and his um, compassion for life. Uh, yeah, our hearts go out to his son uh, Colton, sister Janine, and yes. Duan Street, of course, his partner. Yes. A big Pittsburgh Penguins fan. Yeah, I, was, Pittsburgh. I saw on Facebook today, there was actually uh, a message uh, from the city of Pittsburgh. Some fans in Pittsburgh acknowledging her passion for the Pens and acknowledging that, uh, you know, they she, they she has the whole city, Pittsburgh, behind her. So our hearts are definitely with the entire Caravan family tonight. All right, we're getting set for a second period, even at one. Cincinnati, uh, these Cyclones are a big, muscular team, and this is something good, I think, for the Newfoundland Growlers to face going into the playoffs. I think it's fantastic, really. Uh, and, uh, you know, Ben mentioned that uh, just as we were closing off the uh, the first period. You know, Newfoundland needs that. This has been a skilled team that they have not played a physical-type uh, hockey club for such a long time. And it's so impactful because it becomes a three-game series. This is very yeah. tough to play. Last mm -hmm. night was a very physical hockey game now we have the same thing it's been four periods of physicality with yeah. a 3-2 hockey game and a 1-1 score here tonight this is going to make for a very difficult weekend and it's going to show who is really truly ready for the playoffs we've seen pushback from both sides of the teams here mm -hmm. so it's been great test for Newfoundland as especially as they certainly push towards the playoffs so really good to see and I think it's going to be a, a great weekend and a great test for Newfoundland all right we throw it now to Chris Ballard and Ben Murphy with the call a second period gets underway on Rogers TV. High atop the ice here. Just off of center ice here. The Growlers are going to begin the period with Skirving. Sentazzo. They're shaking it up. Oh, no, they're on the power play. Ballard. Uh, Skirving, Sentazzo, McKenna, Finkelstein, and O'Brien. Just about ready to get back underway. Skirving lines up at center against Caparuso, and he'll win the draw all the way back in his own zone. 45 seconds of power play time remain. Growlers kick off the period as Skirving carries out. All the way to center, the left side, Sintazzo trying to snap that one cross ice. That's intercepted, and Finkelstein can't hold it in. It's clear just inside the Growlers, and with 30 seconds left on the power play, Finkelstein takes a feed from O'Brien, works it all the way up. Right wing sign played in by McKenna into the left wing corner, hopping over the stick of Allen and Sentazzo clearing attempt there. O'Brien parks against the right wing boards to keep it in temporarily, but it is cleared away. Ten seconds to go on the minor penalty to Josh Passel. As Finkelstein settles, Franco does a quick cut pass through the middle. That lands for Riley McCourt off an opposition stick as we return to five aside. And Franco steals a pass away from McCourt. Nice play there in the corner by Hellickson to get in the way. Here's another opportunity. That one well high and wide. Off the end boards kept alive. Cyclones behind the net. Lunging and losing an edge down there. Allows the Growlers to free it up. And a long feed ahead connects. That's McCourt. Head up there, penalty coming up on the Cyclones as the Growlers still have control into the slot. And McCourt unable to reel in the pass, but a power play coming up early in the second period here. Allows the Growlers a chance to take their first lead of the game. Yeah, that's a pretty easy call to make on that one. That's about a uh, blatant of a trip as you can get. And Growlers really got to look to make things click a little bit more on this power play. Few more pucks at Sinclair. Try to get a bit more traffic in front. See if they can open this thing up a little bit more. Couldn't have said it any better myself. 18-39 remains here in the second period. The game is tied 1-1. Skirving, Sintazzo, McKenna, Hoffenmeyer, and O'Brien. Face off. Won by the Growlers. Played into the corner by McKenna. Off the stick of Skirving. He's in a foot race for in the right wing corner. And the Cyclones might get away shorthanded here down the left wing. Here's a shot right into the catching glove of Redmond. No opportunity to drop it and play it. So the face off will come inside the Newfoundland zone with only 14 seconds having ticked off the power play. Eleven five are the shots on goal here in the early stages. 
No shots yet in the period. Face off to the right of Fredman. Face off won by the Growlers. Moving it away. Hoffenmeyer, he'll back into his own corner as Skirving touches it ahead for O'Brien. He's off to the races. Hands off to Sintazo. Drop pass finds Skirving. Leaves it up top. Hoffenmeyer quickly across to O'Brien again. Ryan back up top to Hoffenmeyer and back to O'Brien. Hoffenmeyer again. Wants to shoot. Hands off. Sintazo leaves it back for Hoffenmeyer. Now to the right wing side, O'Brien. Hoffenmeyer waits. Lux trying to find an opening to shoot. Finds O'Brien instead. Back to Hoffenmeyer. Hoffenmeyer. For O'Brien once again. 50 seconds gone on the power play. Leaves it up top once again for Hoffenmeyer. Now it's Sintazo. He was the trigger man on that play, but a nice block in front by Allen, and it's cleared away. A minute to go on this man advantage right down the middle and on side is McKenna along the left wing boards. He's under all kinds of pressure. What a feed. Sentazzo into the slot. McKenna had a nice block there. Growlers recover the puck. Into the net is McKenna there as O'Brien down low. Trying to jam it in across the crease. What a stretch save that was by Sinclair. Bodies flying all over the place as the pass finds its way out. Now we got a one-on-one. -on -one. Skating in. Nice defensive effort by Finkelstein there to break up the play. Long feet ahead at center. Puck still loose. Hucked in front of the growler bench and swept free by John Stone. 15 seconds left on this power play as McCourt gets it in deep. Left wing corner. Gordy Green, one hand on the stick there. Bring it up for Johnstone, who tried to center to put it off the back side of the net. That's McCourt freeing it up for Finkelstein. We're back to five aside here. Left wing boards, Finkelstein collects it for himself. Leaves it for Johnstone. And he spun it free and turned it over. Drags it over the line. Good defensive effort by Isaac Johnson there to keep the puck at bay. It's lost in his skates. He collects it in. Nice move, too. Isaac Johnson into the offensive zone. Toe drags around his man and finds some space in the left wing corner. Gets it back to the line to Garrett Johnston. He'll send it in wide of the cage. Mark Johnstone frees it back up. Nice shoulder check there by Johnstone to help protect that puck. It rolls into the left wing corner. Garrett Johnston activates and poked it back behind the net for Johnstone. Tried a backhand pass. That's stolen and cleared, and that's going to be an icing against the Cyclones with 15.50 to go in the second. Now the Growlers certainly look like they're playing their game. Dominant stretches in the offensive zone. Lots of pressure. And forcing Cincinnati to get the puck on their stick and fire it down the ice. 13 to 6 are the shots on goal here. So that's two in the period for the Growlers. One for the Cyclones. To the left of Mark Sinclair we go. Face off, win for the Growlers. Poke back to the line, Melindy through traffic. Redirected just wide of the cage by Nathan Knoll. Tries to get a shoulder in ahead of his man there. Trying to keep Franco pinned against the end boards. But Nathan Knoll, he's gonna win that puck battle. Hand off the stick there. Big scrum. Pulled away by the Cyclones. It gets chipped by Garrett Johnston. And now Andrusiak's in a foot race. Melindy beats him to it. Nice job keeping his body in front of the puck. Melindy lost his stick down there as Nathan Knoll works it free into the corner. Wells tried to get loose with it. Great play there to send it ahead now. Skirving up on the right wing side. Nathan Knoll chips it into the corner as Skirving gives chase. He's pinned against the right wing boards. Behind the net trying to get loose with it. Skirving does. Into the left wing corner. Played a hard pass trying to leave it up top to Hellickson. And now Skirving, he's being held up trying to get back into the play. Cyclones work it into the offensive zone now for the Growlers. There's a good steal by Pietro Nero. Chipped it by his man and left it for Skirving. Flipped toward the middle of the ice intended for Welsh. He couldn't knock it down, so he'll head off for a change. 5.20 gone here in this second period. Still 1-1 the score. The Growlers allowed the first goal here tonight, but responded thanks to Oren Sentazzo. The later stages of the first, and that's who's got the puck now for Newfoundland. What a feed ahead. Into the skates, though, of McCourt. That'll be knocked down by Sentazzo. Kept on side. No, they say, with 14-19 to go in the period. I think Sentazzo was kind of arguing that, that he didn't actually touch the puck once it came inside the zone, and he was arguing that it wasn't actually offside, but Monty wasn't having it. Yeah, that sounds like a conversation for after the game. <laughs> 
great it's pace to the second period. Very much so. Still 13-6, the shots in favor of the Growlers. But uh, full marks here to the Cincinnati Cyclones. They've done a good job clogging up lanes and keeping up with the Growlers here who have the game plan, I suppose, of trying to get a little extra speed going here tonight. That pass through the middle. Touched ahead, almost getting in alone was O'Brien looking for his third breakaway of the game. Offenmeyer instead. Inside his own blue line ahead. McCourt, a nice little dipsy doodle there as that one gets in deep. Thought that one <laughs> escaped over the glass, but instead it's kept alive. Long feed ahead. Here's McLeod on the right wing. Into the pads of Redmond and a penalty coming up on the play. It's going to go against the Growlers. I'm not sure how that's possible. Angus Redmond was upended in his crease. Touched up there. We'll have to see uh, the explanation for this one here. With 13-34, hooking is the call. And that's going to send Ben Finkelstein to the penalty box. That was Might catch another yeah, look of it here on our replay. monitor. McLeod in off the pad. Yeah, I can see it. Fair call. Yep. Fair call. Definitely... Finkelstein definitely got the stick up and around the uh, up and around the hands of the Cincinnati forward. Got to call that one. So Cincinnati's 0 for 1 on the power play. They enter tonight's game with the league's 21st ranked power play. The Growlers penalty kill is fourth best in the ECHL, and it's already worked once tonight. And this big moment in this game as well, we saw the Growlers with a pretty solid penalty kill early on in this one to uh, to keep Cincinnati off the board on the power play. But this could, you know, be a big momentum swing in this game, either a big kill or a potential power play goal. The Growlers' penalty kill has been sensational lately. Yeah. I had a note written down somewhere about it. Oh, in the last four games, the Growlers have not allowed a power play goal against and are 15 for 15 wow. on the penalty kill. So that's basically this entire homestand, if you want to look at it that way. Yeah, and I find the Growlers do a really good job of getting in the lane and blocking shots and turning that right into offense. This team, when it comes to shorthanded goals, is right up near the top of the league. I mean, eight or nine, I believe, on the season. I got to dig through here just a little bit to find that. Might even be double digit. I was thinking it could actually even be into ten. Yep. Here's Short an opportunity hand. in front for Cincinnati. The rebound. Two rebounds. What a save by Redmond. Oh, my goodness. Through traffic and everything. Managed to keep it out. Eggy works it into the corner for Schultz. Had it stolen by John Stone. And he's going to get away with Skirving to center. He'll walk across the center ice or red line. Before sending it back in his own zone to kill a couple extra seconds here. Off this penalty. Long feed ahead off the stick of Isaac Johnson. And indeed, Isaac Johnson activates to try to steal, but Franco at center. Bouncing pass across the ice. Onside along the left wing boards, Andrusiak. Up top now across to Franco, top of the right wing circle, dishes back to the blue line, Eggy. Now across ice feed, that's going to be tapped away by McKenna, but ringed around the end boards and kept alive. In toward the net, that's blocked away into the corner. Off the stick of Isaac Johnson, but Eggy gets it at the blue line. And it's off to the right wing corner, a little open ice for Franco. Cross ice, nice feed into the slot. Stopped by Redman, no rebound. Angus Redmond has certainly been dialed in in this one, Chris. And it can always be a little deflating to give up a goal in the first shot in the game. Yep. But he did a really good job of putting that right behind him right away and getting right back engaged in this game. He has been rock solid between the pipes ever since. And that first one, not really a whole lot he could do on that first goal. It's a good goal from Cincinnati. It would have been a pretty miraculous save. Yep. Angus Redmond's having a great night. Very quickly, up to 11 shots now are the Cyclones. That's already four saves for Redmond on this kill. And it was about three back to back to back in that one short burst. He, he looks sharp. What can I say? You could maybe even sense the hesitation. I wasn't sure where the puck was, but he had it. Face off. Inside the Newfoundland zone to the left of Angus Redmond. Caparuso to take the draw against Nathan Knoll. 
52 seconds left on the power play here for the visitor. And it's the way Angus Redmond's able to stretch that pad out, but keep it pressed down to the That's ice. That's the hardest part. I remember getting deep right. out of my clothes when I was uh, a schoolboy as the face-offs won back by the Cyclones. Off a of body, but kept alive. Back to the line, Mingo redirected wide. 45 seconds to go, good check in the right wing corner. Good stick by Nathan Knoll down there as well. He had it roll up on him. He's tackled to the ice and the pucks fished out the old Caparuso. He's forced to the outside on a great defensive effort by Melindy. Tenacious on the puck is Gordy Green, loose in the corner, but the Cyclones settle it again. 25 seconds to go on the power play, Crags. Soft pass up top, Mingo across, top of the left circle now. Looking for an open man is Brown. He'll find Mingo instead. Top left circle once again. Delivered but blocked in front by Passholt. Puck is loose, poked by Melindy. Five seconds to go on the kill. Nathan Knoll converges against Mingo. Puck still in the right wing corner. Here's Finkelstein. And we're back to five aside, but it's off the goal post. Growler's got to get this one out. You can count on the captain to help that happen. James Melindy to center. Collected in by Nathan Knoll, and he'll chip this puck in. He'll give Chase himself. Trying to throw a hit there, but pass hold slipped away. 11-11 remains here in the second period. 11 shots for Cincinnati. 1-1. Taken back by Garrett Johnston inside his own zone. Beautiful feed up for Santazzo down the left wing. Leaves it top circle for O'Brien. Left wing corner now, Zach O'Brien's got it. Cuts behind the net. Centered all the way out. It's still loose underneath. That's got to be in. They say no. How is that not in? The goaltender flat on his back in his crease. I don't see the puck. That, I mean, he was on top of it, but it was over the line. See McCord really? There's no way that's not in the net. I'm not sure. It's going to be no goal. Yeah. Like they're not going to yeah. review this. And even if they do, they have the top down angle. And that's all you're going to see is the goaltender Sinclair flat on his back with a yeah. puck underneath him somewhere. Face off to the right to the goaltender, Sinclair. He's been busy. Sintazzo on the draw. He's tied up. Allen played it back, but McCourt gives chase. Quickly played away from him and out of play. And that one, a late whistle. Has that hit a young girl in the front row? I think everyone's all right. I think they're just looking, looking for okay. the puck. Good. We're good. good. Yeah, it's hard good. to look good. away when you see someone get hit in the yeah. crowd. Face off again to the right to the goaltender. Mark Sinclair. Well, he's been fast and furious here tonight, no doubt about that. Face off, one back by the Prowlers. Johnston for McCourt. Back to the line to Garrett Johnston. He'll snap it down low. Sintazzo trying to free it up out the other side. Instead, it's McCourt, but he had his pocket pick. This could be a three on two, but McCourt hustles back. To break up the odd man rush as they force the Cyclones to dump it in. But they recover, trying to center that one out in front. There's a rocket. A high riser from Mingo over the net. Left wing corner for Griffin. Back up top. Setting up shop. Redirected wide of Redmond. It launches back into the high slot. But Sintazzo skates it away. Dropped it off and carrying ahead is Finkelstein. Into the right wing corner. Slams on the brakes. What a stutter step. But he left the puck behind on this occasion as McLeod, he's off to the races. Ellickson, a nice job to stay with him just inside the line, left it in the corner. A man open in front, but a sprawling defensive effort there by Johnstone to break it up. Less than half a period left here in the second. Mark Johnstone has been working and working and working all game long. Ellickson. Left it for Johnstone, he'll advance, but there's a steal. That was offside. Close. Caparuso, his pass broken up and advanced ahead. This could be a three on two for Newfoundland. Down the right wing with speed, McKenna back towards the middle. Johnstone, he was stick checked on the play and couldn't do anything with it. Back the other way come the Cyclones, dropped off. 
That's Eggy. Left wing side. That's going to be poked off his stick, held in at the line, redirected toward the net, but never reached Angus Redmond. The Growlers already making their way back up ice again. McKenna in over the line to the right wing side, a dry rebound. It landed for Gordy Green. All he could get on that one was the lob wedge, poked it wide. Bounced over the stick of Hoffenmeyer, but Matteo Pietraniero is there. Nice feed through the middle to connect with Gordy Green. Who we'll hear from in the second intermission on Flo and on Mixler. Great feed, scurving. His sharp angle try is stopped. Left wing corner trying to activate. Nice play by Isaac Johnson down there. Wild pinned to get an arm free and play the puck. Hoffenmeyer holds it in, trying to bounce one toward the front of the net for Skirving. It's off the mark, Skirving. Pietro Nero fakes, steps in, lets it rip over the net. Bodies flying all over the place here tonight. Good Behind board. the play, in the play, as the play. Nice feed back to Skirving. High slot shot over the net. Left wing corner. Pietro Nero frees it back to Skirving. He's everywhere here on the ice. Hands off in the right wing corner. Great stick by Isaac Johnson again down there. Can't come away with the puck this time. We got under eight minutes left here in this second period. A battle of a period, no doubt about it. A hit. Off the stick of Skirving, but he can't reel it in. It's off the stick of Schultz, and indeed, giving chase is Andrusia. Touched away, nice, nice hit there. Why, that was Welch getting a piece of his man. It's flipped to center. Welch, nice job, poked it. Oh, offside. Oh, and Craig's a spear in on Welch. He's going to the box for that. Right you away. better believe it. And he has the call to complain when it happened right in front of the referee. Yeah, he was uh, quick, quick to send him off for that one. There was no hesitation and clear as day right in front of the referee. Yeah, that's well. that's that's not a good penalty to take but if Chris, you are Lucas Craggs. Leading right into that, that starts with a huge, huge momentum shift just moments ago from that Growler's third unit. I agree. And I, I don't even like calling him a third unit. I like calling him more one C than anything on this night because, you know, you can point to any unit on this Growler's team to be your first line on any given night. But Todd Skirving, Tyler Welsh, Isaac Johnson just had an incredible shift. Momentum, hard hitting, pucks on net, and it leads right into a power play. And Todd Skirving's right back out there. Growler power play over three on the evening. Face off to come to the right of Mark Sinclair. Skirving to take the draw. Santazzo to his left, McKenna to his right, patrolling the blue line as Finkelstein and O'Brien on the face off. Flip free, Santazzo into the left wing corner, bank passes up top to Finkelstein. Head fake, throws it toward the cage. That's broken up and clear. Angus Redmond out of his cage, leaves it for Finkelstein. He'll do a quick lap behind the net before starting it ahead. The drop pass for O'Brien. Still inside the Newfoundland zone, though. He'll have to carry it out a little further than maybe he'd like. But he'll spy McKenna. Oh, we have an ankle breaker there in the offensive zone. Held it at the line by Finkelstein. Right hand side into the half board corner. O'Brien walks it out. Here he is. Yours! What a shot by O'Brien! Blink and you miss it. It's 2 1 Growlers. Wow. 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 Zach O'Brien, I think, used that so perfectly because. I think everyone thought he was about to pass there across Greece, and he absolutely roofed that <laughs> pass Sinclair. Sinclair, one of those where didn't even get a chance to move. No nope. frozen in spot, top shelf, right up where Mama keeps the cookies. Zach O'Brien, just another beautiful goal, his 27th. That's right, he retakes sole possession of first on the Growlers in goals. And as far as points go, that's number 73 on the season for O'Brien, further pushing his record. Making me look good, too, because I said he only gets about four or five ooh, moments before Hello. he buries. Uh, he used up two or three right there. That was there. number four. That was ridiculous. A power play goal, but a turnover there. Growlers have their first lead of the game with 6.40 left here in the second period. Great effort in the corner by Hellickson and Johnstone. Johnstone, he's knocked to the ice by Franco. Franco stays with him, but Johnstone pays him no mind as the Growlers rip the puck free and start out a rush. McCourt upended there, trying to be a part of that, but he pops up. 
Sends a cross ice feed. Pietroniero cobbles it up. Back to Hellickson at the blue line. In! Oh, to Clyde! Off the back of the goaltender! Two tries, Johnstone! What a save by Sinclair as bodies go flying again after the whistle. Acrobatic save from Sinclair there just to be able to keep his eye on that one. And another great look from the Newfoundland Growlers who have all the momentum in this game. Right so now. Zach O'Brien from Ben Finkelstein and Jeremy McKenna. A power play goal at 13-12 is the only goal of the second period so far. No Welch. Uh, Isaac Johnson, Garrett Johnston, and James Melindy on the ice. 6.09 to play here in the second period. It's now a 2-1 game with the Growlers out shooting the opposition 17-12. Garrett Johnston's the first one back, played it away quickly. Welch beautifully played ahead, and now Nathan Knoll leads a rush into the offensive zone, left wing boards. Nice job protecting the puck, and look at Garrett Johnston being harassed from behind down there by the captain five. He's still all over him, too. Played to center, five. Had that one knocked away with ease by Garrett Johnston as James Melindy backtracks into the corner of his own zone and freed it up for Isaac Johnson. He's under pressure and he turned it over. High slot. There's a shot partially blocked away. Picked back up by the Cyclones. Mingo up top. His shot wide of the cage. Behind the net. Loose. Poked away by Melindy but Caparuso. Oh, Melindy hit from behind away from a puck by Andrews. He act play goes on. Mingo at the line again. He'll try a shot, double redirection there, but wide of the cage. Toward the blue line. Advanced away towards center ice. But in come the Cyclones. They left the puck behind. That's an icing for sure with 5.01 remaining. Here is we get set for a short break. Zach O'Brien is 27th of the year, has given the Growlers their first power play of the evening as we step aside for a short break. You're listening to Newfoundland Growlers Hockey on the Growlers Broadcast Network. All right, thank you, Chris. Thank you, Ben. you got to give credit to the Cincinnati Cyclones. They're doing something that I've never seen this season, and they've taken some of that speed away from the Newfoundland Growlers. They usually have utilized that for many scoring chances and, in some cases, a lot of goals. But, boy, they've really slowed them down. That comes with size, and when you have size and, and you're used to playing that way, then it just cuts down a little bit of speed, and I think obviously they've had game tape to know that they are facing a very skilled, very fast mm -hmm. team. They want to keep them to the outside. They're collapsing down low when there's opportunities that way. That's why I think it was yeah. important for Zach to shoot that puck because there was such a collapse down in, in front of the, to the net that he knew that there wasn't going to be a passing lane. Mm -hmm. Good job on him part to shoot, but yeah. full credit to Cincy because they have really slowed Newfoundland down over the last couple of games. Games, and that's their forte to be yeah. big to be leaning to be uh, aggressive when when necessary and that comes a little bit e it's a little easier with size to do that yeah. uh, than without so it's hard to believe that this Cincinnati Cyclone squad could find themselves out of I'm playoff there. contention this season yeah it's hard to believe all right I'm gonna throw it back to Chris and Ben and with the call to wrap up the second period on Rogers TV played each other it was almost like they knew it too and they know that we're going to meet when it really, really matters, and those two teams... The worst like part is already the parallels to the first season, the inaugural season championship. Canadian opponent in the first round. Right. Canadian opponent in the first round. Extrapolate from there <laughs> as you will. As the Growlers get this one in a little too deep. That's a nice... It's hard not to let your mind wander into the playoffs, though. It is. It There's is. still five games left tonight included. Tomorrow, the home finale, and then three more road games, a three and three next weekend. Two in Portland, Maine, and one on Easter Sunday of all days uh, against the Adirondack Thunder, a game likely to be meaningless for both squads. Yeah. Those games are always pesky ones, though. They are. Another icing on the Growlers. That's going to bring all the lads back inside the defensive zone. Yeah, because at this rate, I mean, don't tell Eric Wellwood that I think the Growlers are probably going to finish second in their division. Just because Redding just hasn't lost enough for the Growlers to yeah. make up meaningful ground. So 
with the with that being said, the Growlers are they're probably not going to drop to third at this rate. So you're kind of going to be stuck here in second as that puck kept alive at the line by Luke Brown into the left wing corner, pulls it away, but O'Brien freed it up. Sintazzo behind the net for Finkelstein, puts it off of the ankles, it looks like, of Brown down there. 425 left here in the second period, 17-12. Those are the shots in favor of Newfoundland, but that's 7-6 in the period for the Cyclones. But the Growlers, at least as of right now, have the only goal of the period. Centering effort there is through the blue paint and out the other side along the right wing boards, now into the corner of the Cyclones. Growlers not giving them much ice down there, but it's going to be taken by Caparuso, but a great poke check by McCourt. First one of the puck was Hoffenmeyer, but he tumbles to the ice as that puck rolls off a stick and O'Brien steals, and he's already at center ice with speed. Into the right wing side, fights his way to that loose puck, but it's knocked away from him in the final four minutes here of the period. Taken Hoffenmeyer, cross ice onto the back end of McKenna's stick and in deep. Johnstone is there. He's knocked to his knees, trying to send it behind the net, but that's free back up by Allen. But up top, it's kept alive. Pia Trenero, rebound. Nice save, Sinclair. Another rebound, never reached the net. Still loose, and he's got it covered up. Mark Johnstone and Sean Allen down there continue their game-long battle here. All night. Allen's got him in a headlock now, and Johnstone, he is not going to take too kindly to that. Brown trying to pull Johnstone off of his man. Mark Johnstone has been at 110% this entire game. He hasn't he, taken a shift off. You're absolutely right, but he's playing engaged. He's playing a mean game. Yep. And it creeps into the back of your mind when you know every time you have to go into the corner to pick up that puck, that you have someone like Mark Johnstone barreling in on you, yep. and we know how fast he can skate and how much he can pump those legs going down the ice. And when you know that's coming, you hear the footsteps, and you're a little bit quicker to just get rid of the puck. And we know how well the Growlers can forecheck, and that's when they really start to capitalize. But it starts with players like Mark Johnstone just you're turning it on right. all game. Wow. Are both of these guys going to the penalty box? There you Allen, have it. Allen is going for sure. Over the 200 mark. Hey, he reached the double century club mark here tonight. 54 games. Now, I, no, they did, uh, there's a two minutes up for Johnstone, but he is being allowed to skate to the bench here, and they have taken the penalty down. The Growlers may very well earn a power. They have earned a power play here while they scored on their last one to go one for four. This is already the fifth power play of the game here for Newfoundland. They may not get many more. You'd like to see them light the lamp here again. Big, big opportunity late in this second period. Chris, you know how deflating goals can be late in the period. Early in a period, we talked about that earlier in this game, but if the Growlers can grab one here on this power play, it could be big. Skirving, nice win back. They're going to redo that. Nice play by Finkelstein there. Yeah. Picked it up on the blade of his stick and tossed it perfectly to the linesman. Face off, same spot. It's funny, we've seen Todd Skirving win a couple of face offs on the power play too well, where he's won it too cleanly, too well, and almost fired it right back into his own zone. Truly. I mean, it's not the worst case situation either. Absolutely the Growlers not. just get a chance to rush it out of their own zone. They were likely to skate it back there anyway. Absolutely. Skirving. He'll get another try. He's out with Sintazzo, McKenna, Finkelstein, and O'Brien. Here we go. Clean win there to Finkelstein. Now across to O'Brien. Rolling puck. Dish back. Finkelstein. And that may have been blocked in front. Another try. They score. It's Jeremy McKenna. There's another power play goal. And there's a two goal lead for your Growlers late in the second period. Massive, massive goal for the Growlers, wasting no time on that power play. And a beautiful finish from the summer side sniper. The 17th time he's tickled the twine this season. A beautiful, beautiful goal for Jeremy McKenna. The Growlers power play looking like a well-oiled machine, much like we saw last night. Yeah, for the first bit of the game, it looked like the Cyclones were really able to mitigate the damage, but that's almost the same goal that Jeremy McKenna scored last night. Yep. 
in that low along the ice, quick snap from not even the mid slot, kind of a, a off to the side slot a little bit. Unbelievable, 3-1 the Growlers, three straight goals now in this game and it's Jeremy McKenna's goal. Zach O'Brien picks up his second point of the night and the Growlers have a three on two across Garrett Johnston who tried to center it off again. Lands for Welsh along the right wing boards. He'll play it up top to Garrett Johnston. In on goal. That one right in the crest. Oh, and now Welch. He's got someone going after him. He's not backing down at all. Welch took a pretty good dart in the mouth there. He right did. Before he, uh, he jumped back in. Oh, baby. 2.47 left in the second period. The Growlers struck late in the first period to tie the game. And now have two goals in just over three minutes. Zach O'Brien and then Jeremy McKenna's 17th back-to-back -back power play goals. Your Growlers are two for five with the man advantage. Yeah, and Cincinnati's coach can't be thrilled with that last penalty from Sean Allen there because, you know, that really can really put some momentum back in the Growlers' hands. Yep. Grabbing that one late on the power play. Two-goal lead hopefully heading into the third period right where you want to be. Well, let's call Nathan Noel on the draw. Laid it to the left wing boards, but it's poked behind the net. What a leap by Welsh to try to get to that loose puck. It hopped over the glove of Melindy as he tried to play it at the line, but it swept free and Welsh gets in over for Isaac Johnson through the middle. Nice play, Gordy Green, shifty as always, hands it off up top. Johnston now across, Melindy, toe drag trying to get his way in. What a play by Nathan Knoll from his stomach to hold the line. Sent out to center by the Cyclones. Garrett Johnston watches. As Brown gets it in deep, out of his net, Redmond ahead to John Stone. His pass through the middle is stolen. A one-on-two rush. Andrusiak fakes wide, scores. Beautiful goal from Andrusiak. A quick response by the Cyclones with 2.06 left. Still a one-goal game again. It's 3-2 Growlers. And that's Cincinnati's leading scorer there with his 27th goal of the year. And a beautiful one at that. I don't know. I think Angus Redman might want a mulligan. Oh, I don't disagree with that one bit. He definitely would like to have that one back, but a nice move from Andrusiak and just a quick, quick snapper in that beautiful place. Right above the pad, just below the glove. Nice goal. Well, thankfully that McKenna did score that power play goal or else we'd be tied again. Right wing boards. There is McKenna. It's knocked off his stick, though. Back to center. Pietro Nero's got it. Quickly advanced. For John Stone, he'll slam on the brakes to avoid a check, playing a backhand. He's got two draped all over him, hit from behind and everything. Under two minutes to play, Hellickson, nice recovery. Nice pass by John Stone, up for McKenna. He'll send this one in. Giving chase is Cordy Green, gave his man a little whack on the shin pads, let him know he was there. Cleared to center, but kept alive. And Pietro Nero trying to blow him up was five there at center, but he gave it right back. Cordy Green. Trying to pull his stick out from underneath a fallen cyclone. Cleared away over the head of Hellickson. Back inside the Growlers end. Off the boards, out to center. Burnside able to play it, but O'Brien looked like he was going to be able to steal, but Pietro Nero recovers and finds Santazzo. Gaining steam, slams on the brakes, top right circle. Feeds it down low. What a play by McCourt to find some room. One minute to go. In the second, there's a shot caught by Sinclair. He'll hang on with 55.7 seconds left in the second period. Speaking of second, in the second intermission, for those of you tuned in on Rogers, you're going to hear, for well, the first time in a long time, uh, from Brennan Kapchak of the Newfoundland Prowlers. He caught up with Brian Rogers earlier this weekend. For those of you on Mixler and on Flow Sports, you'll hear Gordy Green face off to the left. Of the Cincinnati goaltender, bodies just flying. As the Cyclones try to get to center, but Allen, well, he'll find it ahead. Kicked in deep by Caparuso. 40 seconds now remain in the period. Played behind the net, out the other side. Finkelstein keeps an eye in on goal and played away by Redmond. Right wing boards. Mingo skates in off the blue line, all the way to the left wing corner. His pass attempt, he takes it back. Oh, what a save. Second opportunity is off the goal post. Get this puck out of the zone. Kept alive again, and a nice arm save 
held on to by Redmond with 17.8 on the clock. Let's get out of this period. Yeah. Get out of this period up one. Now, there it is again. More shenanigans as O'Brien was dumped behind the play. And they're going to take a couple here, I think. Now a late comer to the scrum in here. And guess who it is? Sean Allen. Always finds his way into the mix. Never very effectively. No. I'll agree with you there. I mean, the growler's position, let him let him keep at it. Let him keep going back and forth to the box. Ben Finkelstein just kind of nodding in affirmation as he watches Mingo head to the box, but McCourt's gonna go as well. McCourt, he is giving it to Mingo. Mingo, he's pointing at him. Dinner plans after. Oh yeah, yeah, they're discussing uh, favorite post-game haunts, I'm sure. You know, some of that stuff. These two teams don't like each other for two teams who have only played for the first time last night. I agree with that. <laughs> Continuing to yap in the penalty boxes is Mingo and Riley McCourt. Man, we got to hide a mic down there one day. I'm going to say McCourt was using the little hole in the glass there perfectly to his advantage to get his message across. I'll text him and see what he's saying. I'll, uh, I'm sure he's got his phone on him. <laughs> Keeps one in the box. Face off to the right of Redmond. 17 seconds to go in the period. Face off one by the Growlers to the line and out. Still 12 seconds to go in the period as Eggy backpedals in his own end. Hands off. Maybe time for another rush here. Five seconds on the clock for the Cyclones. Eggy gets hit over the line. Nathan Knoll prevents that opportunity as we head to the break with the Growlers up a goal. 3 to the score. Shots are 22-16 in favor of Newfoundland. So that's 11 shots in both the first and second periods for the Growlers. Also with 11 in that period, the Cyclones for their 16. As we step aside for a short break, let's send it back to Bill and... I almost said Bill and Hart. <laughs> Bill and the band Hart in studio. I wish that'd be cool. Bill and Steve. Take it away, fellas. In bed? Is that what you said? Bill and bed, Hart? I can do the show in bed. That sounds Bill comfy. No, it was Bill and the band. Bill and Ted. Bill, oh, Bill. Bill and Ted. Yeah. Ding! We just got it. We're not the brightest. <laughs> oh, come on. All right. Welcome back to the second intermission. And, well, here we are. The Cincinnati Cyclones, I'm telling you right now, they have really impressed me. For a team that's really still just battling for a playoff spot, mm. uh, they're keeping you know, this uh, Newfoundland Growlers team, a uh, team that's favored, to be one, well, one of the favorites to win the Kelly Cup. They're keeping them in check. Just when you think the game is just going to get beyond them, it becomes 3-1, they battle back. It just shows the character that they do have. It's been a, it was a tight game last night, tight period. Two playoff periods again tonight. That's five in yeah. a row with the animosity, the uh, Ooh, you know yeah. the touch, the the low scoring opportunities, the collapsing down low, protecting the goal crease, the blue paint. Uh, this has been playoff hockey both nights in a row. Yeah. Well, Chris and Ben made a good point. Uh, for two teams that just really met last night for the very first yeah. time, really don't like each other at all. Well, that's a clash in style of play. You I know. know we right? have a physical team and a skill team, and when you bring those together, mm. and especially the way Newfoundland started the game, which yeah. we talked about a couple of times, but they're matching. They're matching head to head, and uh, it's been a great series so far. But there's one thing Cincinnati does not have that Newfoundland has. That's Zach O'Brien. That's who we'll start our highlights with, with this goal. And uh, of course, um, we're so used to saying Zach O'Brien scoring. I mean, we talked about how we see the collapse on, on Cincy right here when they come down low, and that's just a gift that Zach has to be able to read the play, watch him come off the wall, he turns, it's patient, it's power play hockey, but he knows he, there really is no passing lane because Zach is always going to, you know, look to pass first. But here he is with that, that unbelievable shot he has. He's just in incredibly gifted offensively. Mm -hmm. And his vision for the game is second to none. Uh, but I'll come off the wall, little shot there. Uh, just beautiful underneath the bar. Uh, and we are really gifted to have him in that power play situation. That was his 22nd of the year. Finkelstein and McKenna getting the assist on that one. Uh, the Newfoundland Growlers almost made it 3-1 on this play. Very close. 
Yeah, and again, we see some, you know, some great scramble here. Good zone entry, little backdoor play. They were opening up things, but again, the second retrieval, back to the point again. Tried to hit the back post, back door there, and again, even with the vision, the uh, the rebound play there. Beautiful entry in from the neutral zone. A little first uh, hand shot here. This one again gets picked up again. We go back to the D. That little shot to the back door there. That's a set play they're trying to tap in. But then right here, boom, trying to bank it off the goaltender with another rebound. Then they all uh, cover up. I mean, it was it was an opportunity to really push this game forward. We see after every whistle tonight, there's mm -hmm. been a real introduction to each other with a mm -hmm. little push and shove, uh, just about every whistle. That Cincinnati goaltender, Mark Sinclair, don't forget, he is making his first professional start tonight yeah. here in Newfoundland and Labrador. Well, McKenna, again on the power play, the Newfoundland Growlers increase their lead. Yeah, and it's again, uh, this power play has been absolutely lethal and they work it around to perfection. It comes right out here in the slot. That is the danger. That's a set play. That's a come to, the, you know, from the point down low, right into the bumper zone, they call that, just right there in the bumper, right down low, come back to the point, Comes down low, off to the side, and he is perfectly positioned in the bumper to get that shot right there. Perfect power play, scurving, attracts attention in front of the zone. That's a set play, and of course, who's stirring the pot? Zach O'Brien. Mm -hmm. Right here, beautiful pass. And that's just a beautiful goal right there. Great power play, great vision, great work in the perimeter. Down low, bumper shot, makes it 3-1. We thought the game was going to get a little bit beyond Cincy, and here they do. They come right back. That's right. Cincinnati, of course, making it a one-goal game once again on this one. A shot that Redmond, you can tell, in the aftermath, he wishes he had uh, this one back. Yeah, certainly. You want to make sure that you're stopping these. And sometimes it's not even the position of the stop. It's when you want to stop them and when they get that 3-1 lead. And if you carry that into the third. So it's not only just the positioning of this play. He's got to get out a little bit more. You know, it was a great fake by Cincy, but he's got to get out of that blue paint a little bit more there. He's got to trust that his teammates are going to pick up the puck, pick up the rebounds from side to side. He's got to come out. He's got to challenge. He's got to take away every inch of that net that's mm -hmm. there. He knew he sat back a little bit and uh, you know gave some holes great shot but hey he's got to come out of that zone and be a little bit more challenging all right after two periods of plays the Newfoundland Growlers three the Cincinnati Cyclones two we'll be back and continuing with the second intermission next on Rogers TV it all started when I racked up some serious debt interest payments were going up creditors were calling Jane's and Noseworthy came up with a plan knowing that the phone was going to stop ringing and that I was not in this alone was a huge relief Bankruptcy or a consumer proposal or whatever help you get is not the end. It's just the beginning. A chance to start again with knowledge and support and people in your corner. Are you ready? Get out of debt. It's okay. Learn more about Leah's story at janesnosely.ca. If you want convenience, Marie's Money Mart is here for you. A one-stop shop for a variety of products, homestyle breads, sandwiches, plus check out our freshly baked artisan breads and single-serve desserts exclusively at our in-store bakery on Frecker Drive. With 25 locations, wherever you go, there we are. We're here at The Rooms, finishing our second season of Sharing Our Cultures. This is the place where you get to meet amazing individuals from diverse cultural backgrounds who are making significant contributions to our communities. Join us for Sharing Our Cultures on Rogers TV, Channel 9. We were just talking and I went to my first Growlers game in the stands last Sunday and I got to say how great it was to have fans in the stands again and you went to uh, your a game last night. I was there last night as a fan uh, mm -hmm. and the uh, glass was being banged by so yes. many uh, young hockey players. Jerseys were everywhere. It was great to see you uh, walk in the concourse. You know they were kind of high-fiving me as I was going by. It was great. Want to throw a little shout out to Coach Noseworthy and the under 11 Capsby female hockey team that are in attendance tonight, and they are loud. They have been loud tonight. <laughs> it was great to see. All right, let's throw it to Brian Rogers, who had a little chat with Brennan Kapchek. He had talk earlier today. Thanks very much, Bill and Steve. Back on the desk, doing a great job as usual. I'm here with the pride of Mount Prospect, Illinois, not far from the Windy City of Chicago. Here's Brennan Kapchak, number five rookie defenseman of your Newfoundland Growlers. Brent, thanks for joining us in our second intermission here. 
This is your first season as a pro hockey player. It hasn't gone as planned, but you're back now. You're almost ready to rejoin the team. I know it's been a hard run for you, but how do you feel right now getting ready to maybe play on Sunday? I'm feeling great, you know, uh, on ice, off ice, just feeling good all around. The team's been buzzing, so we're ready to go in the playoffs pretty soon here. Yeah, we've talked a lot, of course, and obviously after you had your injury, it, it kept you uh, away from the hockey club, but you had to work diligently day in and day out. How did you handle that, Brennan, from a mental and physical standpoint? You just kind of got to be mentally tough and, and get up even when you don't want to, come into the rink when you don't want to. Uh, it's a long battle, but, uh, you know, there's light at the end of the tunnel, so that's what keeps you going. Yeah. Now, I know that you and your wife enjoy it here. You're really taken to Newfoundland and Labrador. Obviously, we're not in Labrador, but we're here in St. John's. But what is it about this place that a young guy from the suburbs of the Windy City, one of the biggest cities in the country, the USFA, likes about Newfoundland? It's just a beautiful place. Uh, we can go on our hikes outside, go check out Signal Hill. It's pretty calm and quiet. Uh, good people, like generally, just everywhere. So it's a great place to be. And obviously, you're with an excellent hockey club, and I know you've got many, many friends. In fact, all the boys are bands of brothers. Doesn't matter who's come in here and who's joined the team, whether they're still here or they're gone elsewhere. It's been that type of feeling, and I'm sure you felt that way when you walked in that room the first time. Definitely. It's been a family since day one when I walked in, and every guy that, uh, gets added on or picked up uh, just right into the family so it's a good group okay let's talk a little bit about mount prospect illinois walk me through you being a youngster and of course the game has taken off in the usa the, uh, the americans are going to be a superpower if they not already are in the pro hockey world tell me about it as a young guy growing up what drew you to this great game Honestly, I don't even know. I was skating at age one. My dad uh, put me on the ice, and uh, I had a cone or something, and I was skating with that, uh, learning to skate. By age two, I was on a team playing pickup hockey. Obviously, you know how that goes. Just throw a puck out there. We chase it around and whack it. But, I mean, ever since then, I loved it. Age five, I woke up and at 5 a.m. because my brother had a tryout, and I said, Dad, I'm playing. And uh, to this day, he says all he knew is he had to spend a couple more thousand dollars for me to play. So <laughs> so thank you to my parents for, for fishing that out there. Oh, that's awesome. And 5 o'clock in the morning, and you wear number five with the Newfoundland yeah, Browners. Yeah. And you got out to a great start. I know the guys were, we weren't playing at the Mary Brown Center, but we went out to CBS, yeah. out in Calgary's, and you played outstanding uh, leading into that first pro season. You had to feel good about where your game was at. I mean, yes and no, like there's always improvement, but you know, at the time of the game, yeah, you're, you're happy with coming out with a couple points and a win there, so always in room for improvement though. Well, you were getting the two points in the games, but you were also putting up points. I know you're a team guy, but still, as a rookie player, that's going to be a great feeling that you're able to come in, join a new team, and instantly be able to contribute. Yeah, definitely help the team, uh, help the team in any way we can, blocking shots, getting points, like whatever it be. So. Well, Brent, I saw you out in, in the games in Calgary's, and you were uh, a fearless competitor. Size doesn't seem to uh, hinder you from going in to get a loose puck. Uh, have you always played that way? Uh, yeah, since, uh, yes and no, but uh, just being small, people told me I was too small to do it, so that's it. Yeah. I said, I'm doing it. Yeah. Well, they used to tell Marty San Louis that, too, and uh, look where he is yep. today, right? That's just one example. What are your strengths? Like, as a player, what do you consider your strengths in this game and what you need to improve on, at least in your estimation? I, th I like to think I got a good IQ and I'm a good passer. Definitely work on shooting, playing the body some more. Yeah, and you, you like the physicality, obviously. A little bit. You know how much that endears you to Newfoundland and Labrador hockey fans? That's what they love, bro. They oh, love the yeah. blue collar, hard nosed guys, especially your size going in there against bigger guys. They'll cheer you on all night long. So and I need a couple more fights, eh? A <laughs> couple more fights? Well, we just want to get you into the lineup first and get you back playing your great game that yep. you were playing early. Yep. But hey, I'll tell you what, Cappy, if you drop the gloves here, kid, you'll be a hero in this town forever, no doubt. Let's walk away from the game of hockey a little bit. What do you like doing outside of the game when you're home? Me and my wife go on a couple hikes, a couple times a week. We go out to eat, hang out with our cats, hang out with, with our friends around here. Uh, we're pretty calm and quiet. We go out once in a while, but not too often. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, you know, like uh, growing up, did you have a favorite player that you pattern your game after? Definitely not patterned my game after, but uh, definitely Ovechkin was, was my guy growing up. Okay. Yeah. And a forward, you're a D man. Yeah, it just kind of happened. I ended up playing D and, and I stuck back there my whole career. I was a goalie at one point when I was young. 
I wanted to play real bad when I when I was probably probably six or seven. My parents said we'll get you the pads to play as a backup if you like it. Maybe you can switch, but uh, we only lasted a season. So, <laughs> and probably my last question here is obviously being from around the Windy City, but the Hawks your team growing up, the Blackhawks. Yep, obviously, uh, guaranteed. Definitely. And do you remember going to games as a youngster? Did your dad take you to games? Did you see any games in the old Chicago Stadium as opposed to the United Center? Or were you too young? Well, he I doesn't know that know. the Chicago yeah, Stadium. Now I don't even know. <laughs> well, honestly, What's the new so stadium? Because, I mean, there's the Jordan statue out there. Well, okay, so he's talking United. That's how young this kid is. He doesn't remember the Chicago Stadium. That's okay, too, Cappy. Brent, thanks for being so candid, joining us, having some fun with us on the broadcast. You're a fun guy. You're a great player, too, and a really good friend. So good luck. In Back in the lineup, play hard, and let's win this for Abbo. I know everybody in the room feels that way. Yes, sir. Thanks, Raj. There's Brennan Capcheck, number five. He's a beauty, to say the least. <laughs> he seems like a fun guy. Yeah. Cappy seems like the kind of guy you want to hang out with on George Street yep. on a Saturday night. He almost had the wink and the gun going. <laughs> right? <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Brian Rogers, for that. Uh, we're going to take a little break here, and we'll be back momentarily to continue with the second intermission on Rogers TV. Interest payments were going up, creditors were calling. I finally realized I needed help. The people at Jane's and Knowles really really took care of me, and I'm glad I chose a local solution. I felt like they understood me better. Getting help with my debt has given me the energy, the headspace, and the time to make my dreams come true. A chance to start again with knowledge, support, and people in your corner. Are you looking for that kind of help? It's okay. Learn more about Leah's story at janesnoseworthy.ca. If you want convenience, Marie's Money Mart is here for you. A one-stop shop for a variety of products, homestyle bread, sandwiches, plus check out our freshly baked artisan breads and single-serve desserts exclusively at our in-store bakery on Frecker Drive. With 25 locations, wherever you go, there we are. I can't thank people enough for donating to the War Amps. If I could, I'd give every single donor a big hug because things that they've allowed these kids to do are amazing gives them the opportunity to experience life as everyone else would. They can do so much. They can play musical instruments, snowboarding, play hockey, kayak, swim. There's no doors being closed to them, and I find that amazing. It's affected my family in a way that we may never be able to thank you. All right, tell them what your mom just sent. Uh, she said you were looking good. Me? Yeah, you were looking good. Nah, we dated in high school. <laughs> True story. Yeah. All right, uh, if you were at home last night and you heard a big boom of some sort, it was the crowd in Bay Roberts absolutely losing their mind. Why was that, Steve? Well, last night, congratulations to the Mount Pearl Junior Blades. Uh, it was Game 7 mm -hmm. in Bay Roberts last night. Sold out crowd, great community, incredible place to have yeah. a game of hockey. And uh, certainly it was intense. It was Game 7, and it went to double overtime. Uh, actually, Bay Ro uh, sorry, CBN Stars, CBN Stars uh, were leading 2-1, to one, mm -hmm. and with uh, just under two minutes left, Mount Pearl tied it up to force overtime, but it was an incredible play to end the series and the season. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a couple of screenshots, not sure if we'll be able to have a look, but you can see right here there's an incredible two-on-o play, and there's a pass made across uh, crease. Um, and what was going to be, it could have been an easy tap in, might have been a great save as well, because uh, Riley Patton is just an incredible goaltender. But there was a call made, and you can see here that the player going to the net was looked as though he was going to be tripped up. Right. And it was, a, at the moment, thought to be a controversial call because there was a penalty shot awarded. What I can say, and I'm glad to have said, that the referee made the right call because as it was played out, uh, there was a CBN uh, player who threw his stick. Yeah, that first picture that you saw yeah. was actually the, the stick leave. There it is. There right it there. is right there. We see the stick leaving the play, and that is an automatic penalty shot. And referees take so much heat. And in that moment, it looked as though, it looked as though he was calling a penalty shot on a tripped player mm -hmm. before the player had received the puck, and it was not the case. The referee made the right call. Unfortunately, it was a call uh, you know, that we see in double overtime. Not unfortunate for the Mount Pearl. I'm just saying it was an unfortunate call, but the referee made the right call, resulting in a penalty shot, 
and um, uh, Mount Pearl scored they to win did. the championship uh, in what was an incredible season, mm -hmm. and uh, they became uh, the champions of the league, the President's Cup wow. winners. Uh, might have a, a little picture of them on the ice. There oh, you go. There you Congratulations, go. Mount Pearl. <laughs> I do want to put a little shout out, certainly to both teams, the Mount Pearl Junior Blades and CBN Junior Stars, mm -hmm. because they were the cream of the crop. They were the first and second place teams in the league. They showed a great championship. Uh, but not only that, this is a community league, and it's been a league going on now for, I believe, almost 40 years mm -hmm. plus. Uh, that's run by volunteers, local volunteers, uh, you know, the coaching staffs, the community, everybody that's involved uh, with this league is just makes it so much special. So certainly it was a great series sure. uh, and uh, fantastic. And certainly thank you to everybody who makes each franchise operate it on a daily basis. Oh, it's just so good to have that league back playing hockey again after a few years of not being able to hit the ice and fans in all those communities, especially like, like Bay Roberts. Mm -hmm. They are a hockey mad community and one oh, of man. many on the Avalon Peninsula. So it was good yeah. to have hockey back and congratulations to Mount Pearl. Mm. Now I can't wait for next season. <laughs> Bring it on. But we do have another hockey league to talk about, the ECHL. And we do have the Newfoundland Growlers up 3-2 over the Cincinnati Cyclones. We're just a little bit away from the start of the third period. Uh, the Newfoundland Growlers trying to catch the Reading Royals for first place in the division. We can tell you that in the first period of play, Reading leads the Maine Mariners 1-0. Mm. And Maine, uh, make that Wooster. And let me see, who's the other two? 12 Riviere are scoreless in the first as well. And there's three teams there, uh, Maine, Trois Rivière, and Wooster, all separated by one point, battling for those final two playoff spots in the North Division. Talk about exciting times. It is incredible. And uh, we see them, you know, as the, each team is turning it up. And the, the uh, you know, the area of error is finite. All right. We're going to throw it back now to Chris Ballard and Ben Murphy with a call for the third period on Rogers TV. We're in for a doozy of a third oh, period. Get your popcorn in you now, folks. Throw that bag in the microwave. You are not going to want to budge out of that chair. Sintasso O'Brien all ready to go. Finkelstein comes in. It looks like Mingo and McCourt have, uh, have laid off each other, at least for the time being. See how long that lasts. So the, the current delay, the uh, Kansas City coaching staff getting an explanation from the officials. We got four on four hockey for a buck 43 here. It's like we're just about ready to go here. Sentazzo slides in next to the 6'5", Dominic Franco. Sentazzo standing at 5-9. And Sentazzo wins it back. And the third period is underway as Finkelstein thinks he spies some ice, and he's going to take it down the right wing, into the slot, they score! What a shot by Oren Sentazzo! There's the two-goal lead back just 12 seconds into the third period. What a snipe by Sentazzo. And just like that, the goal scoring lead on this team is tied once again. Beautiful play, beautiful pass from Ben Finkelstein, and a beautiful finish from Warren Fantazzo. That nice wrister post and in quick release on the drag. Just an absolutely beautiful goal to kick things off. 12 seconds in to this what third frame. What a shot by Fantazzo. Off, it almost looked like it went off both goal posts. He snuck it in the inside post and ricocheted across the ice, and by then it was probably in the net. But what a way to start this period of turnover! And a nice bailout there by Finkelstein as he worked it to the line. Growlers clear it out. Santazzo's 27th from Ben Finkelstein is the official goal. Oh my goodness, what a pass, but knocked away. Maybe Santazzo gets the hat trick here tonight. He's got a pair. O'Brien up top of drive. And not much traffic in front of the goaltender, Vin Diesel. I wish, I wish that were his real. I, I wonder Never if he gets that. that very much because now it's not like 
I know that Vin Diesel's actual name is Mark Sinclair. I was trying to do some homework on this guy and completely bailed on it when I realized that was Vin Diesel's name. Instead of actually looking up the wonderful NCAA career stats of this young man, I just started Googling Fast and the Furious puns and <laughs> Vin Diesel jokes. Here come the Growlers. Up top, Pietra Nero holds the line, leaves it for McKenna. McKenna. Dangerous pass there, lands, redirected. What a save by Sinclair. Right wing corner, Eggy plays keep away to get it around Gordy Green. And now a two on one back with some speed. They score a perfect two on one. And another quick response by the Cyclones makes it a 4 3 game. What an absolutely beautiful goal there from Cincinnati. And Andrusiak with his second of the game, and he is their leading scorer, but a beautiful pass there. That was all really the work of Ryan McLeod on, or sorry, Matt McLeod on that one. That was just some incredible speed. A display of footwork there to burn past the defenseman and a beautiful, beautiful pass across. The yeah, you can't blame Redmond on that one. Yep. What a finish. Very similar to the first goal we saw Cincinnati score. We're still in that four on four that we began the period with. Just over a minute in, two Genos. Unreal. Taken by the Cyclones, but John Stone kept his man pinned against the end board. Still 25 seconds of four on four left here. Growler's got to be a little more careful here that they don't allow uh, Cincinnati to take advantage of some of that open ice. And here they come in again, top of the right wing circle, into the corner. That was a dangerous look out in front, but the puck missed its mark. Held it at the line, played into the left wing corner. John Stone's going to take it away. Five seconds to go until McCourt and Mingo are back. And storming ahead is Isaac Johnson. Slams on the brakes, waits, and plays it back into his own zone. McCourt, he's going to stay out onto the ice. He's going to play this puck. Freed up for Garrett Johnston, up ahead. In deep giving chase and beating out the icing is Riley McCord himself. He frees it to the open side corner. But here come the Cyclones. One on two rush, in over on side. Five is Sharp Angle shot, stopped by Redmond. Bodies all over the place again, holding the line. The Cyclones, good stick there by O'Brien. That one's over the net, Melindy recovers it. Played ahead into the skates of McCourt. First try to get it out, didn't work. The second try is sent to center. And Sintazo gives chase, swept it, left the puck behind, and the Cyclones get it. Live and O'Brien jostling away from the puck as both teams initiate a line change. Not even three minutes gone here in the period. A goal apiece already here. Looking for more as Franco works in and a save by Redmond. Welsh. Leaves it in the corner. He got immediately dumped after the fact, and the Growlers work it back up by Skirving. Across and in for Pietro Nero. He avoids a check. They got to watch the man sneaking in behind the defense, but Ellickson noticed and took him out. Drags at center, a backhand pass up on the right wing side. Rifled into the corner, out the other way. Drags is there, penalty coming up to Pietro Nero. Interference is the call. And down in a pile in the corner is Lucas Craggs. Slow to get up there on that one. Not really sure. Hard to see from our angle up here. It was right in on that uh, on that close side wall to us here. And, and really tough to see what happened. It kind of led to Craggs stand down a little bit, uh, a little bit longer there on that one. But uh, Rowler's shorthanded nonetheless. Well, the kill's been good tonight, but they're, what are they, two for two. But already having, we know how quickly Cincinnati can respond yeah. here. They've done it a couple of times already tonight, under a minute in this period already. So the Growlers, they'll have to dig in here. Hoffenmeyer, Johnstone, Melindy and Skirvick, no doubt that quartet knows how to dig in. Massive penalty kill for the Growlers. Johnstone, he's... Exactly the guy you'd want to have on the ice to start this kill. They'll line up on the face off against Caparuso, who wins it straight back to Dejon Mingo. Across and into the slot. Good coverage there of Caparuso. Cyclones spin it up top. Top of the right wing circle. That's Craggs. Stick check loose behind the net. 
Taken back, though, by the Cyclones. Worked up top. Johnstone got just a piece of it. Can't get it away. That pass stolen to the line, held in. Brown lets it fly. Great block by Melindy. He'll stiff arm it forward. Not out. Waiting for that puck to reach him down there is pass Holt. Freed up by Hoffenmeyer into the corner, and Melindy clears the zone. 40 seconds gone off of the Cincinnati power play. Shots are 25-18, Newfoundland. Just under 16 minutes left in the third. Here come the Cyclones. Down the middle, advance too far for Andrusiak. Hellickson gets it, spins away from the four checking forward, but not out. Five using his long reach to try and keep it alive along the left wing boards. Comes back to Eggy at the point. Under a minute to go here on the Cincinnati power play. As they hand it off back up top, Eggy across. Now to the left side, Franco. Down low, up top, shot wide of the net. Five. Plays it around the right wing boards, and it ends up at the right point. Cross now to Franco as he walks halfway to the corner. Good stick there by Garrett Johnston, and he'll clear this home. Only 30 seconds remain on the Growlers' penalty kill. With Matteo Pietraniero in the box, good stick lift on the forecheck by Nathan Knoll. All over his man down there. And Gordy Green able to get control and snap it back in. Nathan Knoll, another big hit on Eggy this time, but Andrusiak. He'll get a chance to move it ahead down the left wing. Over the line, off a body. Puck is loose, and Nathan Knoll, he's going to try and free it up for Gordy Green, but he's not going to get to it in time. The goaltender had to play that one all the way the length of the ice as Pietro Nero escapes the penalty box. Great job by Nathan Knoll to kill the remainder of that penalty. Almost single-handedly. Hopped over his stick. That's going to be an icing against Newfoundland. 11, no, 14, 25 left here in the third period. The Growlers hanging on to that 4-3 lead. What an absolutely tremendous display of penalty killing from Nathan Knoll right there, Chris. You summed it up pretty much perfectly. He basically took that into his own hands and killed off about the last 30 seconds or so of that penalty kill. Growlers PK looked great there. It did. Cincinnati might have had, you know, the time on attack aspect of things oh, set sure. up in the Growlers zone, but they didn't really have any great looks towards the Growlers net, towards Angus Redmond. The Growlers did a great job keeping them to the outside, keeping those high danger scoring chances to a minimum. Face off to come inside the Growlers zone, back to five on five here with 14 minutes and 25 seconds left here. In the third period, the Growlers up 4-3. The go-ahead goal belongs to Oren Santazzo, his second of the game from Ben Finkelstein, just 12 seconds into the third. Face off to the right of Angus Redmond. Tazzo and Caparuso on the faceoff. Clean win by Sintazzo. Ben Finkelstein trying to advance that pass out. Had his pocket picked. Fights it out over the line anyway as O'Brien carries in. Right wing side. Sharp angle off the blocker of Sinclair. Kept alive. Buck took a little ride on the dasher boards there, and that's going to be stolen by McCourt and held in. In on goal, just wide. O'Brien looking for the deflection there as that's lifted to warn the line. And Riley McCourt gets it back at center, flipping it for Pietro Nero. And ahead, Finkelstein. He's in a battle, and Caparuso rips that puck away from him. Mingo out to center and sent in by Griffin. Wide of the cage of Redmond, spinning it free as Hellickson against the boards for Isaac Johnson. His pass put right back in off a steal by the Cyclone. So Johnson gets it back. Flip free into open ice for Welch. Gets hit over the line and blows by the defender Burnside. Burnside catches up to him, rolls toward the front of the net. Great play by Welch, forcing the goaltender to pounce on the loose puck. That's going to send us to immediate timeout. 13-17 left in the third period. What an entertaining game this has been as we send it back to Bill and Steve at Rogers headquarters. Are they playing Careless Whisper? Is that what I just heard? <laughs> Careless Whisper? Wham? 
<laughs> what? All right, thanks, Chris. Thanks, Ben. Okay, it's uh, four three growlers. Here are the goals that made it that way. We'll start with Santazzo with his second of the night, and well, it didn't take long for fans to get back in their seats. And this Just happened. incredible skating by Finkelstein. I mean, he opens up the legs going up the ice. It's incredible to watch. It's high level skill. He feeds it to Santazzo, but look at the skating ability. Open up, open up, open up, oh. and then right to the slot. That is absolutely beautiful. If you're a young hockey player looking at home, know that everything you're doing on a power skating basis is incredible to be able to make that play speed mm -hmm. through the neutral zone that was outstanding and Cincinnati made it a one goal lead again with this goal right here and again we see just explosive speed through the neutral zone I've often said so many times that's where the offense comes right up there you can see him just drive 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 and again it's that it's at that player back door that nobody's really picking up I know it's speed but it's that little tap in we still see both eyes he just got ahead beautiful pass beautiful touch and they came back right away it's yeah. exciting I mean since he has showed so much character here in the uh, last 48 hours all right it's four three Newfoundland growlers let's throw it back to Chris Ballard and Ben Murphy on Rogers TV of the opposition as well they know how fast and how swiftly he can move and the grit uh, he plays with is they're going to redo this face off um, yeah he, he's been dynamite tonight Ooh, a little pyramid being built here face off in the offensive zone Franco pulls it out of the scrum. It hit off a body in a rolling puck. Taken in by Craggs on the backhand. Great job by Hellickson to force him wide. He's going to get that puck to himself. Looks up ice. Beautifully reeled in by Isaac Johnson over the line on. No. Off. Side. With just under 13 minutes remaining. The crowd trying to buoy the Growlers to a late game push here. Not a ton of shots in the period, just three apiece to this point. John Stalt, McKenna, and Gordy Green up front. Melindy and Johnston on the back end. Face off one by the Growlers, and Melindy's going to clap this one into the right wing corner. Rolls off the other way, and Gordy Green frees it up. Johnstone centers. Oh, what a stop there by Sinclair off a nice rip by Jeremy McKenna, looking for his second of the game. Left wing corner. Growlers may have dodged a bullet there as Gordy Green appeared to trip up his man. At center, five, trying to chip it by Melindy Andrusiak. Stepping on the stick there, it looks like a Johnstone, and away come the Growlers. McKenna and Green out to center, chasing after a loose puck. It's knocked away and cleared in by Cincinnati. And that's an icing. Mark Maple. It's been a couple of those. Strange whistles. Yeah. Throughout this one. Can't disagree with that. Face off to the right of Mark Sinclair. Riley McCord has looked great tonight. After returning from injury, you never know what to expect. He's had a great game. Uh, he's missed uh, three games, and the Growlers win the draw. Brian back to the line. Finkel's sign. Frees it up with a great feed to Pietro Nero. Back up top, O'Brien a drive. And it's off the blocker of Sinclair and away into the corner. That's cleared by the Cyclones. That puck caught an edge and rolled the length of the ice. No icing. So Pietro Nero with 12 minutes exactly left finds O'Brien. He'll get ahead quickly. Gets by his man. Right wing side, a rolling shot is gobbled up and Allen going to hit O'Brien after the whistle again there. Not much of a surprise. Finding his way into the mix. Looking to make it 2 3 on the season by the end of the night. Who knows? 11.50 remains here in the third period. The Growlers hanging on to that one goal lead. It's 4-3. Here comes an energy line. Nathan Knoll, Isaac Johnson, Todd Skirving with Hoffenmeyer and Hellickson. Face off one cleanly back to Hoffenmeyer. In on goal from his back into the slot scurving. He'll hammer it wide off the inboards. Nathan Knoll centers up top at a save made Sinclair. The rebound collected in by scurving, sending it back up top. Hoffenmeyer, that pass didn't really land where he wanted it. Behind the net, Nathan Knoll leaves it for Johnson. Now Hoffenmeyer's got it where he wants it. His pass, though, is stolen. Now that's some speed coming back the other way. Passel 
He's dumped against the inboards. Puck loose behind the growler. Net freed up in the corner, but taken back. Centering. Nice effort in front to block that one away. It rolls to the line, is held in. Knocked out of midair. Good active stick by Skirving. Lunging free. The puck is still loose. Stolen by Hoffenmeyer. Off an errant pass by Cincinnati. And the Growlers come away three wide. Off the end boards and in. And some of the Growlers peel it off for a change with 11 minutes left in the third period. 28 to 19. Those are the shots. 6-3 in the period for Newfoundland. Behind the net. The Cyclones emerge out of their own zone. Keeping an eye is Johnstone. Got a piece of that pass, too. In deep, Redmond out of his cage. Plays it behind the net with a backhand. Melindy ahead, and Gordy Green skates free. Partial odd man rush. Fake the pass. In the slot, ripped wide by McKenna. McKenna pulls it off the right wing boards, but couldn't hang on to the puck. Back come the Cyclones. A three on two. Crags offside. <laughs> Ten sixteen remains here. I hate close games. I mean, this is entertaining as all heck. <laughs> oh my God, my insides are are. I my heart's beating a mile a minute here. Right on the edge of my seat, and it feels like that's the case pretty much right around this stadium for those who are actually sitting down. Because a lot of people are not and haven't been almost all night because this has been such an entertaining back and, and forth game. I might not be the biggest fan in the world of the wave. But our crowd right now is absolutely killing it. Nailing it. Get down here tomorrow afternoon, folks. Come on. You haven't been to a game yet the year? At ilgrowlers.com slash tickets. Or if you want to wait a couple weeks, at ilgrowlers.com slash playoffs. Get your butts down here for the Kelly Cup playoffs. A steal by O'Brien in the offensive zone. Stops. Wait. Sintazzo. What a save by Sinclair. And it's out of play. Hurt, smash. Santazzo to take I think Santazzo's a little surprised there wasn't a penalty on the play there. Just buried after that chance on that there. Hurt oh. for the boards, but he seems okay. It is hard to see it. What a play by O'Brien to oh. stop up. Oh, he just kind of tripped up over the goaltender. Oh, okay. Face off to the right of Sinclair. He's been great. Really, really great debut for Sinclair in this one. He has, uh, he's really shown his worth. Shown that he can stick it in this league. Sintazzo, McCourt, and O'Brien remain out there with Finkelstein and Pietro Nero. Face off one this time by the Cyclones, but a backhand sends them ahead. A two-on-two -two rush. Pietro Nero back. Forces a long angle shot. Blockered away by Redmond. And flipped to the middle of the ice. And ooh, almost kept alive by O'Brien. But instead, the Cyclones try to get back. Look at that work by Pietro Nero on Caparuso in front. Right wing corner knocked away from Sintazzo. McLeod tries to get loose. He's a bit of a speedster. Pietro Nero gives him no life at all. Sintazzo, how is that not an interference penalty? Oh, my goodness. Another silly non call. We saw that call twice last night. Easier ones to call than that. Here comes Skirving through the middle. Welsh, nice feed across. Got it in deep. Welsh gives chase in the right wing corner. Absorbs a slash. Tries to keep the puck pinned as he's dumped from behind. Rolls to the line. Hell, Ellickson opens it up to the left hand side. Sharp angle off the outside of the net. Collected in. That's Cairns. Behind the net, trying to rifle this one to center. It hits off a stanch, and the Growlers come away with it. Nathan Knoll chipped in through an offensive check on Burnside, and he's going to hit his man. Nice check. Another one you could probably say, since he didn't target the puck, that that could have been an interference penalty, but we'll, we're ignoring interference penalties today. Here's Skirving. Nice job to keep around Burnside. His shot off the outside pad of the goaltender, Sinclair. We got 8.15 to go here in the Growlers. Once again, Stingy not allowing their opponents any light in the offensive zone is McKenna. Beautiful toe drag, left the puck behind though. Back to center, look at McKenna being turned inside out down there. Melindy now walks across his blue line and peels back away, handing off to Hellickson. Through the middle and advanced in deep by Mark Johnstone. Allen behind his net, not wasting any time, trying to get out of his own zone. The pass connects at center up on the right wing. 
Andrews Yak, bit of a rolling puck. They'll just chip it behind Garrett Johnston. Johnston under pressure down there. Nice work in the corner by Garrett Johnston. And he'll free it up for McKenna, who clears his own to this. He's going to be an icing against the Growlers with seven. 22 remaining in the third. The shots are becoming a little one sided. 31 to 20 in favor of the Growlers, but they lead it 4 2. Shots in the period 9 for Newfoundland. The ice is tight out there. You oh. do not have much time. My or heart's space. in my throat. This feels way too much like playoffs to yeah. not be playoff. It certainly has that feeling in the air here at Mary Brown Center. It's a playoff atmosphere. And folks, don't forget, there's still jersey auctions to come this season. Head to nlbrowlers.com slash auctions uh, to maybe get your hands on one of those uh, Leafs by Growlers jerseys. It's Gordy Green, great play after having been upended. But now, ooh, Caparuso. Blows a tire and away come the Crowlers. Stinkles time. Trying to get by everybody. He's hauled down away from the puck again. Charging in is Sintazzo. Almost came away with it. Nice hip check almost by O'Brien. Caparuso had it stolen by Sintazzo. What a play. Fed ahead. Now Sintazzo down the right wing. Carries him to the offensive zone. Drops it off to O'Brien. O'Brien almost, and he did leave the puck behind. Three on three rush back. In the final seven minutes of action here, there's one off the stick of Redmond into the mesh and out of play. That one landed right in the in the lap of a fan in the front row. Literally the easiest souvenir he's ever gone home with. Yeah, it doesn't get a whole lot better than that. The puck falls right into your lap down through the mesh. That's that's glorious. You ever, when you were a kid, did you ever like catch a puck or a baseball or anything at a game? I never did. I don't I, think so. No, I. That's why I overcompensated as an adult, and I buy all Fine. the memorabilia I want now. <laughs> Face off to the left of Angus Redmond. Yeah, I might not have caught one in the crowd, but I, but I, sure I, can, one. I can sure spend 100 bucks on a Blue Jays game used baseball from a game I've been to. Isaac Johnson, a nice steal there. In over the line offside. Face off will come outside, but a great effort by Isaac Johnson nonetheless. And how about that back check effort from Warren Santazzo on that last oh. hit? What a tremendous extra effort going that extra mile, which is, again, if I say it one time, I'll say it a thousand times before we're done tomorrow evening. Playoff mindset. We're here. It's time. Face off for Nathan Knoll outside the Newfoundland blue line. Ties up his man. They're going to restart this one. A goal apiece here in the third period, both in the first minute and seven seconds. The Growlers, with what is currently standing up as the go-ahead goal, scored just 12 seconds into this period. And only 6.20 remains here. Cincinnati, they're going to be battling hard to the final buzzer, looking for that game-tying goal. They're going to have to go and get this puck out of their own zone. Well, actually, they're not. The puck's going to come back to them. That's an icing. <laughs> On the ice for the Growlers, Isaac Johnson, Noel Hoffenmeyer, Jeremy. Oh, I did it again. There's got to be someone famous who's Jeremy Hellickson. I think he's a ball player. Yeah. Now that you say it. Yeah. He used to play for the Phillies, the Orioles, and the Nationals. Oh, he won AL Rookie of the Year in 2011. There you go. Okay. I'll let myself off the hook for yeah, that one. And good. I will still apologize to our own Hellickson. That is Matt Hellickson. Sorry, bud. Flip free at center. Isaac Johnson's in a one-on-one. -on -one. Cuts wide into the left wing corner. Trying to get it between the legs of the defender. That's broken up. Under six minutes now remain. In this period, that pass lands right for Hoffenmeyer. They'll sauce one ahead. Getting a piece to get it in a little deeper was Isaac Johnson. Hard on the forecheck now is John Stone. Here, slowly lumbering into the Growlers and is Franco. Centers! Oh, and Ruziak sent that one wide of the cage. Nice feed to center for Gordy Green up on the right wing. Hoffenmeyer. Hell lifted in. 525 to go in the third period. 21 shots for Cincinnati, 31 for Newfoundland, and the Growlers get back in time. Icing is the call against Cincinnati. Two guys in this one. Looking for hat tricks. That's true. Hopefully one of them finds him. Yeah. Uh, 
I don't want to jinx it. So I don't even really want to say it out loud, but I'm thinking Warren Santazzo, potential empty net situation in a few minutes. He'd love to Maybe. see it. Face off for Johnstone. McKenna ready to fire one on goal if he wins the draw. Gordy Green, Melindy, and Johnson out there as well. Burnside along the right wing boards. He's tied up off the draw with Gordy Green. Johnstone in there as well. Another battle. Growlers. Ooh, McKenna. He is steamrolled as the puck comes out into the slot. And it's held at the line. Melindy off the goal post. It bounces around and stays out. Kept in, though, by the Growlers. Garrett Johnston up top. Under five to play. There's a shot into the glove and held. Oh, and now McKenna. Man, he's got a short fuse down there, hey? Is that Crags or five? Doesn't matter. We're going to go to a short break. Under five to play. How's your heartbeat, folks? Well, let's ask uh, Bill and Steve back at Rogers. You doing okay, boys? I don't know. We're, we're, we're pretty stressed. Ooh. Man, you're right, uh, guys. When you say this is like a playoff game, I will tell you this. I do not want to be a team facing the Cincinnati Cyclones in the first round of the playoffs if they make the playoffs. It's been physical and, and it's been nasty in around that blue paint and certainly below the goal lines. It has not been a fun place to play at all. And we are seeing absolute playoff, not just on the ice, yeah. off the ice. Yes, we are. We have commented so many times about the fans and the atmosphere. Over 4,000 fans tonight yes. down there, banging the glass. The jerseys are out. A beer uh, pyramid, a beer can pyramid. A even. beer can per pyramid right there. <laughs> and I thought you weren't allowed to bring more than four out to the seats. Hmm. <laughs> mm. But no, I saw the Avalon yeah. Celtics there, the Paradise yeah. Warriors. Lots of these minor hockey teams having uh, a good time. And man, this is this is what it's all about as we cruise towards playoffs, which, by the way, uh, start April 21st and 22nd. Those will be the first two games uh, at the Mary Brown Center. Who they will play? play? Uh, we won't know yet. But we'll throw it back to Brian and Ben right now. Brian and Ben. Chris and Ben right now as the third period continues on Rogers TV. Turnero on the back end. Note the flip. Finkelstein started the night paired with Hoffenmeyer. And now they've switched Hoffenmeyer, playing on a separate pair as the Cyclones work it in. Good block there toward the line. Knifed away by Redmond, jumping on that rebound. Getting it to the line, but not out was O'Brien. Ringed around the opposite way. Pietro Nero gives it a backhand whack and gets it to the opposition blue line. Santazzo follows up and forces a steal, but Finkelstein had it ricochet off the end of his stick. Loose behind the net in the crowd zone. 420 to go. Right wing boards pulled away by McCourt. He'll poke it to center, and it's a three-on-one for Newfoundland. Santazzo high slot hopped over the stick of Finkelstein. What a miss. Mingo. Offside, a penalty. Too, Too many, many men on the Cincinnati Cyclones. Oh, boy. The Cyclones are furious. Look at Franco. Ooh, Franco not happy. He wasn't happy after last night's game as well. See if how much more of this the ref takes, but... That's a tough, tough penalty to take at this stage in the game, Chris, as you alluded to just a little minute ago. 4-0-2 remains here. I mean, I don't know what to do if you're Cincinnati. This is a tough situation to be in uh, strategy-wise. Yeah, and I think I think right now it's on it's on the head coach just to try to cool the temperature down on the bench a little bit because they're definitely worked up. Things are a little hot, emotions running high. Kind of bring the temperature down a bit here because there is still lots of time on the clock. Face off to the right of Mark Sinclair. Tied up and stolen off the draw by Vive. He'll try and get in. His pass off a of body and out in neutral ice. McKenna freed up to Skirving. Dropped off Sintazzo. Bit of a rolling puck trying to get it back down low as Oren Sintazzo Skirving. Sends it behind the net and there's a clear for Cincinnati. A goal on this power play for Newfoundland, who are two for five on the man advantage, by the way, uh, would, would go a long way to ending this game. Yeah. So this could be the game here in the next puck 25 of this Growler power play. 
They got a couple of decent power play buys out there as well as Skirving gets it in. Not very deep, but held in along the left wing board. Skirving follows up and frees it up along the right wing boards. McKenna now back up top to Finkelstein as the Growlers get a chance to set up on this power play. Brian. High slot, top circle, down low, into the slot again, McKenna. Oh, that was a nice setup, but the puck rolled on him a little bit. Finkelstein ahead again to O'Brien, and into the open ice, McKenna. Into the slot, Skirving tucks it wide, still looking for number 20, and now they got to hurry back. One-on-one -on -one rush, wide, centering effort there. Ooh, a man in behind the goaltender. In the net, Redmond's on top of his guy down there. 38 seconds to go on the power play. Johnstone holds up, trying to leave it for Hoffenmeyer at the line. He's in a battle against the boards, and it will be skated free. But nice job by the Growlers to keep the play from entering the offensive zone. Only 20 seconds left, but a steal. Isaac Johnson crosses over his man. He's on a partial break. What? Oh, no. He scores! It's Isaac Johnson, a power play strike. Two goals again for Newfoundland. Oh, let's rewind the tape and watch it again and again. Wow. I think Johnson showing his skill, his speed. What a goal. Just flawless. The goaltender way too aggressive out in the white paint. And Isaac Johnson with the speed he had, there was no way Sinclair was going to get back enough in time. No mistake, a beautiful shift from the forehand in that classic. Drops the shoulder, gets the weight down, nothing that the defenseman can do, and then a quick slip to the backhand. Beautiful finish, Isaac Johnson. Crowder, two goal lead. Get your tickets. I know I've said it a couple times You're tonight, right. folks, but if you've been waiting, saying, Jeepers, I wonder, wait, when should I get down to a growler game? I meant to go down the year. Well, <laughs> now, and no better time than now. These games have been unbelievable. They've been so much fun. And you owe it to yourself after a long few years with the whole COVID situation. You deserve a night out. Take Nan. When was the last time you had Nan out? Get her down here. Andrusiak, left wing side. Not one going wide, but blocked away by Redmond anyway. Under two minutes to play here. Burnside through traffic into the glove and out of the glove of Redmond, but he's got it covered with 1.33 to go. Pietro Nero all over Andrusiak down there. There's still John Andrusiak with a little extra shot after the whistle in that one, too, and him and Pietro Nero still John back and forth. But I don't see Andrews Yak accepting that challenge from Pietro Nero here at this stage. Pietro Nero, he's, this might not, this is a little abstract. He's the youngest guy I've ever seen who has old man strength. He is a, a wise veteran beyond his years. Uh, just talking to this man and even just knowing the other impressions of, of the players uh, about Matteo Pietro Nero. Man, oh man, the, the things that they say about that young man, the poise he has for his age. Uh, you know, he, he, he's a rookie wearing a letter on this team. It's He's not it's, wearing a letter tonight, let me be clear, but he is among a very small group this season who has worn a letter. It's really, really hard to believe that he hasn't been in this league for years and years and years. And he is the kind of guy, I mean, he's 22 years old, he started his pro career overseas in, in Finland. He played for, I know you're a uh, you're an F1 guy. Uh, he played for the team that is co-owned in Finland by Valtteri Bottas, the F1 driver currently driving for Alfa Romeo, really cool. the former uh, constructors champion with Mercedes. Fun I'm fact. trying to milk this moment because it's a legitimate F1 hockey tie-in. <laughs> that's a really, that's an interesting fact though. Also, Coffee Savant. That's right. Uh, Bottas wasn't, he wasn't part owner of the team when Pietro Nero was there, but that's my tie-in. I had to get it in. Awesome. But still, I mean, the, but the, he started his pro career overseas instead of, you know, returning to junior. I believe he was an underage guy playing pro. And even speaking with different people around the organization, they say, don't be shocked if he's the kind of guy who could be a, an American League captain level or better. 
His leadership ability is a natural one. I always love to hear the journeys these guys go on to get to where they are and to empty cage. Let's go. Six on five advantage here with the net empty for the Cyclones, and they're going to redo that faceoff. Exactly 90 seconds on the clock. Shout out again to Kara Puttycomb. Just saw your message. Growler's uh, director of sales thanking for the ticket plugs. I got four or five more in me if you want. <laughs> NLGrowlers.com slash tickets, folks. Single game playoff tickets, group tickets, packages. Face off for McKenna. One and pulled back by the Cyclones. Mingo across to his D partner. Up top now to Franco. Didn't like his lane. Hands it back for Mingo and across to the top right circle. Mingo, that pass in his skates. Hands it off. Gets it back up top. Blocked in front. The net is empty. Jeremy McKenna. He'll float it. Ah, it's not going to catch an edge here, but no icing all the same. Oh, almost a misplay there by the Cyclones as they make their way out at center. Mingo over the line. That pass rocketed across the ice. Too much for Schultz. Under a minute to go here in the third period. The Growlers up by a pair. Caparuso, right wing corner. Schultz works that one up top. Held. Rister wide of the cage off the end boards. O'Brien. Santazzo might get a chance for the hat trick. He sneaks by his defender, Oren Santazzo. He's got the hat trick. Let him fly. It's 6-3 Growlers. What an effort. What an effort. Kept the feet moving. Blew by the defenseman after wrangling his arm free. What an effort. What a finish, Oren Santazzo. What a well-deserved hat trick. And here come plenty of hats out onto the ice. What a treat for the over 4,000 fans in attendance here tonight. All but assured that they are uh, going home with two points in their pocket, stories to tell, and five cents off gas tomorrow. Ah, you took the words right out of my mouth. I said, if you need another reason to get down here, you got a chance to get five cents off your gas because there's always a good chance the Growlers are going to score five on any given night. I pulled out a stat earlier as the ice crew gets to work, filling up. This is, I'm just going to say, this is the some of the most hats I think we've seen on the ice like in a long time here. Kudos to all of you Growler fans for showing up, for throwing your hats. Unbelievable stuff. Really great showing here tonight. Oren Sentazzo finishes the hat trick. Late in the third period with only 35 seconds to go. So for OC, that's goal number 28 on the season. Fantastic stuff. And that actually puts him in now to a tie for second place in rookie goal scoring with 28 on the season. So that's Santazzo from O'Brien. So for Zach O'Brien, make it a three-point night. Ben Finkelstein has three assists. So just a normal night at the office for the Newfoundland Growlers in the final 30 seconds here. Sentazzo finishes the hat trick, much to the delight of this crowd. Almost 5,000 strong here. 15 seconds to go here. And the Growlers with only Ten seconds on the clock here. Just going to wait this one out. Tonight, your Growlers took one more step closer to setting a new team record in wins in a season. This is win number 41 on the campaign. Two away now from a team franchise record set in the Kelly Cup season in 2018-19. Folks, get down here tomorrow afternoon nlgrowlers.com slash tickets or if you hate our website head to the Mary Brown Center website at mbcenter.ca let's go heave away indeed 6-3 your growlers take it home here tonight in another black and blue effort here Ben an awesome awesome game from start to finish growlers facing a little bit of adversity in that one giving up an early goal but they really showed that they know how to battle back and even when they get that lead and teams start to nip back at their heels a little bit, they staved it off, 
played a really, really solid game, top to bottom, both in the offensive zone, defensive zone. No complaints on my end. Tonight, I think the hardest working player award should be an absolute gimme, an absolute shoe in should be for Mark Johnstone. Okay, thank you. I was going to say number 26. No. I thought he could have had it last night, no problem. I agree with that. You could have went up and down the lineup, and you can with this team on almost any night. But and, I think Mark Johnstone. He, don't get me wrong. If he doesn't come away with that tonight, it's fine. But anyone who watched this game should nominate him first and foremost. Among anybody, I thought Welch played a real hard-nosed yep. game. Really like it. You know, game. you have to... Oh. A wealth of riches, what can I say? Could Mark, be Nathan Knoll. I, yeah, yeah that, even just that hit to put five into the bench should be enough. Here, here comes the details. No, there you have it. There you go, it is Nathan Knoll. He would have been my second pick for sure. Not taking anything away from Nate. He, he found yep. the pocket tonight. And he found an intimidation factor. People knew when he was on the ice. Love that. Ben Finkelstein with three apples on the evening. He is your number three star. Imagine having three points and your only third star. Tough, tough. And Ruziak with two, two goals. goals. Two goals. I can't believe all the growlers that had three points. And no one is topping the performance tonight of Oren Centazzo. A hat trick to lead the Growlers to victory. And gives the stick to a Sentazo fan. Awesome. Uh, wearing his jersey. Awesome. Look how happy that fan is. Look how happy all these fans are. They just witnessed one of the best games we've seen here all season. Yeah, I didn't Six, think it could get a whole final. lot better than last night. No, well, a few more goals both ways here. Well, let's jump into the final summary here before signing off this evening. Third period, the Growlers scored 12 seconds into the period thanks to Oren Centazzo, his 27th from Ben Finkelstein. And then at 107, Andrusiak picked up his second of the game uh, from McLeod to make it 4-3. Isaac Johnson... Didn't really get a chance to say enough about his beautiful goal. <laughs> yeah. Tucking in a backhand on the power play, his 13th of the season at 17.42 from Gordy Green. And then with the goaltender pulled in the net empty, Orenson Tazzo finishing off the hat trick from Zach O'Brien uh, at 19.24. Uh, penalties in the third, only two. Pietro Nero for interference at 3.19. Also could have been hardest working player. Uh, and Brown served the too many men bench minor for Cincinnati at 1558. That led to the Isaac Johnson power play goal, which pretty much ended this game dead in its tracks. Final shot total, 34-22 for Newfoundland, 12-6 in favor of the Growlers in the third period. The Growler power play for the second straight night. Uh, dynamite, three for six tonight. They were two for three last night. Terrible at math. Combine those for a really good power play. And the penalty kill. Five straight games without allowing a goal. 18 consecutive penalties killed off. Uh, the backbone of the team this evening. All right, Chris, Ben, thank you so very much. Just to recap, uh, Nathan Knoll, hardest working player. Third star went to Finkelstein. Uh, three assists. Mm. No surprise there. Cincinnati Cyclones and Drusiak. He got a couple of goals in yep. this game tonight. And no surprise, first star goes to Oren Santazzo. Getting the hat trick and folks losing those $30 hats that your mom got you for Christmas. <laughs> Boy, you're in so much trouble when you get home. <laughs> it was a great two games. We've got the great game three tomorrow. But this may have been two of the best games I have personally and uh, yeah. witnessed that Newfoundland has played since the inception of the franchise because they have had pushback, they showed offense, uh, they played physical, they matched up head-to-head -head from top to bottom. This was a great game tonight, a great closeout in the third period as well. And think, just to think, you have a chance to see those two teams go at it again tomorrow afternoon, 4 p.m. at the Mary Brown Center. Get there early to get your tickets. It's going to be a great game. And the next time the Newfoundland Growlers play on a Saturday night at home, Home, it'll be playoff time. Their first two games of the playoffs will be played on April 21st and April 22nd. You know darn well we'll be there for that playoff ride for sure. Thanks for tuning in tonight and on behalf of Chris and Ben, Steve and myself, Bill Hart, have a great evening. We'll see you soon.
Creditors were calling. I finally realized I needed help. The people at Jane's and Knowles really took care of me. 